<laughs> Welcome everyone to the 24th episode of Chatting with Nuts. Uh, I am accompanied today, of course, by my always amazing guest and my my main man, Alan. Alan, how you doing, man? This burger's delicious. Alan uh, graciously was able to fit this into his schedule, but uh, he did say, hey, I got to eat something. And I understand. Completely. Word. Uh, Word. Nutrition is very important. Um, everyone, how you guys doing out there? I hope they're doing good. I forgot to pull this up on YouTube so I can respond to the comments. So while, while we're figuring out how they're doing, I'm going to be pulling this I feel up. like your mic got turned up a little bit. Oh, it just, got turned up? Just a little bit, yeah. Oh, that's probably because, I mean, I did switch. I switched mics. Um it was so, in the last like minute. It oh, just, like, jumped. It could also be StreamYard because it does like an auto level. Oh uh, yeah. So if, it might. It might. If be that good. happens, you can literally. I when that happens on mine, I just like disable auto thing and just set the people to a volume that works. This is a uh, this is good advice actually. Because mm. sometimes StreamYard does not do what you ask it to do. Yes, StreamYard is a wonderful platform though, and Correct. sponsoring the stream tonight. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> if only. If Hold only. On Bye guys. I'll see you guys later. Everyone say bye. <laughs> my uh, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were over here seeing the new kitten. Um, and like 20 minutes before them, my mom and stepdad were over here seeing the new kitten. So I guess I can take my headphones off. Yeah. Yes. I'm taking my headphones off. Hold on. Go for uh, it. Honey, is it okay if I take my headphones off? Sweet. Um, let me shut this off. I'm oh, good. I'm going to pull up some chat here. We got a, a lot of people. coming through. People never, uh, never get tired of audio. Alan. They love it. Speakers. Hey, what's up, Star? Good to see you. Yes, there we go. Sweet. Don't got to be crushing my head anymore. Nice. RJ, okay. sucking diesel now. RJ, <laughs> so I was watching Line of Duty, which is a, a British cop show about anti-corruption. And the guy, um, Ted, who is Irish, like super Irish, um, he was like, we're <laughs> sucking diesel now. And I was, and I. I no, he said it? Yes, if it hadn't have been so late at night, like one in the morning, I would have rewound it, taken a picture of the of the caption, and sent it to you, RJ. But I wanted to remember to tell you, and so yeah, he said we're sucking diesel now. <laughs> that is incredible. Awesome, I love it. What's up? What's up, bald booktuber Scott? Kevin says CWN in my veins. <laughs> oh man. It's it's good that the week is finally over, folks. Let me tell you what. And thank goodness. You know, a lot of times with these, you know, like I interviewed Rocky last week, and sometimes I have a new guest on, and it takes like you know, there's a lot of preparation that goes into these, especially whenever it is an author. And at the end of this week that I've had, I feel like I couldn't have had anyone else on but you, Alan, because every time you come on, I don't have to worry about a damn thing. Like it, I know it's good. Yeah, I literally have. I literally have no idea what we're going to talk about. I'm I'm assuming we're going to talk about Elden Ring at some point. Um, Certainly. But uh, otherwise, like we're just gonna. It's been a hot minute since I've been on here, so we got some stuff to talk about. Yeah, I think this is the longest since the first time you came on. I think it's the longest we've been. It's almost been like three months. Word. It's been, yeah, it's been, it's been a hot minute. Right? Sure. Just, so January, February, Mar mid-March, almost three months. Word. You know, we're, we're trying to cut it down to one a quarter. We're trying yeah, to cut back the addiction. Be a, be a quarterly. Um, I hope soon. I have no excuse at this point other than it will take a long time to do, and I – it just can't muster up the the wherewithal to do it. <laughs> I, I can I, right now. I, I can barely get out uh, TBR. I got I'm in two months behind on wrap up again. I have I have book reviews. I have a book that I read in August <laughs> that is on, that's sitting on the floor waiting to be reviewed from August. I never want you to back down. By the way, from doing your wrap ups three months late, I love it. <laughs> I want every month wrapped up. I, 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 I it's incredible. It. I'm so behind. I always feel, I always feel. And, and thanks. Uh, I am, I'm letting you join my stream, Jimmy. Yes, this is chatting with Alan featuring Jimmy Nuts. Actually, that, that and is someone true. also asked how my Christmas tree is still up. Worry not. It goes down this week. This week it goes down. We always leave it up till spring break. Benjamin says, I've tuned in for the match uh, much anticipated wrestling showdown. Disappointed to see in separate locations. Yes, Alan, you called me out, bro. <laughs> I, I watched a very wonderful video featuring your lovely wife, Christina, yeah. and it was 40 minutes long. Me and my wife watched it, and I'm sitting in the comfort of my own home, Alan, on my, my wonderful television that's mounted above a fireplace I never use. And I, I'm watching Alan, it's, you know, talk about assumptions. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, someone this, made that assumption. I didn't come at you. Someone I get this feeling in my gut, no. and it's not indigestion for once. 
it, it's the feeling of when someone calls you out. And I said, did Alan really just cut a promo on me? I did not. I was talking about my past. Um, Listen, someone asked if I was willing to wrestle you if it was in person. Oh, sorry, if it was live and you let me win. And I said, sure. And then it reminded me of the story about how was I, when I was in school, my, my friends and I, we, we made up a wrestling stable uh, that dealt with Roman emperors. And it literally, my wife found that out while we were dating. And it was like, I'd forgotten about it for like 15 years. And it was the most embarrassing thing. Like, we're like we're dating, but not like, we're not like super dating yet. And, you know, she, she super that, dating. Well, you know, <laughs> we're, like, we're, everyone's super committed. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh no, like this wrestling, this Latin wrestling story. And I was just like, oh my gosh. She, the woman claims there's a video of it somewhere. Cause I remember us filming it, like jumping off the couches um, and, you know, threatening people while <laughs> making threats in Latin, like, like Kai saying right there. Exactly. And I don't know where it is, but if I ever find it, I will gladly put it online. It's the nerdiest thing, nerdiest thing I've ever done. Absolutely. The nerdiest just saying, thing Alan, done. when you step into the squared circle with me and we lock eyes from across the ring, it's a different game, brother. <laughs> that's, that's fine. We're not have talking seen, lyrics. We're talking headlocks. Have you know? seen the, 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 the promo, the absolutely incomprehensible promo of Macho Man uh, with the little creamers saying, oh, the cream, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. I show that video every year when they learn the word for savage, the Latin word for savage. I, I show them that video because what the engineering teacher, I'm like, guys, next time you're in this class, go, Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell. The cream rises to the top, and the engineering teacher always goes, "Oh yeah, I am a lion, President Jack Tunney." Like he'll just he'll completely start going off on that, and it makes no sense. And it's just a bit for for Macho Man to like show his sleight of hand with creamer packets. It's the most ridiculous thing of it. It's it's the most '90s or late '80s, early '90s wrestling thing ever. I mean, but it still is popular today. Like it's, and it's going to transcend to your, your students and go on. And like, that's an amazing character. I know. I know. Macho Man is 100% amazing, but that is, it is the, it is a three minute incomprehensible rant about president Jack Tunney. Cause he keeps going yeah, No, yeah. It's like, you can't, you're contradicting yourself, macho man within three seconds. <laughs> brilliant. I love Macho Man. I uh, I heard a really great story. I trained uh, a little bit with Rip Rogers. Uh, he ran OVW and he uh, he rode around with Macho Man and Lanny Poffa, which is uh, Macho's brother. And Rip said uh, Macho Man was like a certified lunatic. Like he held up a Waffle House with a knife because they they didn't give him hash browns or something. Like dude, dude was out of his mind. Macho Man. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah, brother. <laughs> Just out of his skull, dude. Skull. He's also like five six. Not really. He was like five eight, but for really? wrestling, for wrestling at that time, that was very short. Very wow, very short. that's yep. bizarre. Yep. Uh, oh, well, uh, someone said, "What's the shirt, Jimmy?" It says "Game of Chokes," uh, and it has jujitsu up here, BJJ, because um, oh. we choke people in jujitsu, and uh, I have a bunch of them. Uh, like instead of dare, it's Dars, which is another form of a front headlock choke, arm in choke. Um, so I buy a ton of jujitsu novelty tees because I don't have any style sense as people watching my channel. I've been wearing the same like eight shirts for two and two years now. Word. So, uh, people are saying I have to let you win. Absolutely not. Um, greetings from the UK. I can't say how happy it made me to hear Alan say he was watching line. Of just finished, Jesus. just finished the final season. Just finished the final season. That's a good show. Alexander wants to know when the next jeopardy is Alan. Sunday. Be... So I haven't actually gotten out the video. Or the... Oh, like this Sunday. Yeah. So oh, okay. again, it wasn't supposed to be the Sunday, but literally no one could do any other weekend this month. Yeah. What's so, up with that? Like it's busy on book two, man. I know. So I, I had to move it this way, but then I've been so busy that I haven't been able to get a video out, let alone make a freaking thumbnail for this thing. Yeah. So it is in fact, Sunday is the tournament of champions of champions. So the three the three winners of the tournament are now playing for keeps um, on um, Sunday. And and what you should know is Michael Mindelin, um, his wife made patches, like iron-on patches, what? of my new logo, a Library of Alexandria, and they're ones for Book Jeopardy winners. It's Wait, did you say Mindelin? Yeah. 
Oh, I love Mindelin. I know. Michael's the best. What a great guy. And so there's these patches that says book Jeopardy winner or tournament winner. So you're gonna get you're gonna get a patch for having won the people. I'm gonna send them uh, a library of Alexandria patch, a burning, burning library patch. Listen, my episode was excellent. I don't understand why you haven't had me back on. I know I didn't win anything, but like I, I haven't had you back on because I'm I'm not in the new season yet. So I can't recycle guests <laughs> yet. I just recycled Klaus because uh, someone had to drop at the last minute. That's fair. So, and That's I was fair. like, Klaus, you want to do it? And he's like, yes, I do. And then he walked again. <laughs> like, if, if it would be redemption, it wasn't redemption, Klaus. It was not. Um, <laughs> That's a fantastic impersonation. Um, But we have other claps coming down the pipe. Me and you're not Jeopardy. Well, actually, yeah. AJ, I'm, so, I'm sitting there trying to plan. Yeah. This, and look at how bad I am at planning stuff. Because I just like there's so much going on right now, Jimmy. It is. I have got. Yeah, where, I, what is I, that? Man? I haven't gotten home before 630 the last week. Because what is going on is it's the last week of the quarter uh, before right. spring break. Thank goodness we have spring break. And I foolishly assigned everybody presentations to be due this week instead of last week, which I should have done. And so every, I got presentations all week. And in order to keep these children from one of, the, one, of the, one of the classes or two of the classes have a project where I gave them a Roman from the Roman Republic because I don't really get to teach like the early mid-Republic. I jump from the the monarchy straight to the end where Caesar is. And so I made them do a research paper and a political ad for it and a presentation. And I make them come in and defend their, their research paper because otherwise great. one child will do one child will know what's in the paper or they'll write crap. They'll just copy stuff online and be like, Oh, he fought in the third Sam Knight war. And I'll be like, <laughs> who are the Sam Knights? And they'll have, they'll have no idea. It just so blank stare ahead. Yeah. So I warned them. So they had to come in and they have to defend their paper. So I look at their paper and I ask both of them, to make sure that they both know what's in their paper and that if they say the third Sam Knight war, they have to tell me who the bloody Sam Knights are. So it's a whole bunch of extra work to ensure that they're not trying to pull one over on me. So every that. second that I've had free. So my lunch, I've forgotten to eat lunch the last eight days in a row. And my wife is angry because I keep bringing my lunch home and I haven't eaten it because every spare second Damn. I am at lunch because I have to use the class time for presentations. And then I've got, uh, them coming in, my my whole planning and lunch, defending papers. In addition, the Latin Club or the JCL, Junior Classical League, my kids, we're going to our state competition at the beginning of April. And that's going to be awesome because our, our regionals was um, so freaking like best we've ever done. So we're planning to go down there, but that's a ton of paperwork because I got to get vans. I got to get... Um, I've got, you know, had to book the hotel room. I've got to collect money from all of them, collect forms from all of them. And I have to fill out a ton of freaking paperwork and I am not administratively gifted. Like that's not, that, that is not my gift is right. administration, paperwork, organization. I'm not an organized person. I'm just not. When we had another Latin teacher, that was his thing. He was excellent at it. He handled all that. I hate it. And so between that and, you know, kids need to come in and talk and, and it's just like, it's exhausting. Like every second of my days is, is done with this. I didn't, there were two days that I didn't read a single page and I'm not sure that's happened since I've been on booktube. So yeah. absolute madness. And I don't know what the original question was. Uh, well, I have a new one. If you, okay. I, I was also kind of just saying what's going on. Cause we we're talking about how busy we've been. Um, yes. But... I said, I didn't do something because I've been getting home late. Oh, we were talking about, we were talking about, uh, we have a couple collabs coming down the pipe. Yes. So they're not planned. Because I haven't responded to really anything in the Discord, but every time I, I make like a new group to collab something, I'm like, oh, there's Jimmy and Sarah. I guess I guess <laughs> I only do collabs with Jimmy and Sarah now. <laughs> I mean, I'm basically just here just so we can talk every, every know, few right? weeks. I mean, so it's... yeah, me and Jimmy have like three collabs coming up. Ke uh, Kev wants to know Latin competition. How does that work? And I was actually kind of curious. What, oh, so what, what it mean? is is um, there's a bunch of different categories. Essentially, most of it's written tests. So we have classical art, um, Hellenic history, which is Greek history, which my kids destroy on, history of the Republic, history of the empire, um, uh, like abbreviations, phrases, mottos, uh, Roman customs, uh, mythology, Latin literature, vocab, any of that. You sign up for two tests, but there's also like costume contests. There's they give a they memorize a speech in Latin and kind of act it out. There is one of my kids has written a an English speech where they they pretend that they are a greek or roman mythological or historical figure and they write a speech like you know just acting out like three or five minutes of of of, of their life or whatever yeah and um 
then there's like Olympic events. There's like, you know, mile run. We have uh quatuor square, which is four square. Uh, we have like a water balloon thing. Um, there's a, like a relay thing that is based on a myth. And then we have like, art, there's art projects. Like someone's building a model of the tomb of Hadrian and what my kids love. And what I love is Latin quiz bowl. Um, cause my Latin quiz bowl teams are really good. And this year, these kids, we have, we have submitted, um, uh, Kurtaman is the game show. It's a uh, quiz bowl. So we've submitted a bunch of paperwork and a bunch of stuff for club of the year. And so it's, it's against all the other clubs at schools in the state of Florida. We'll be competing against all of them. So there's like 50, 50, like two schools are there and we're going for club of the year, which is a publicity thing we've done. We have won club of the month from the national organization twice. We won it this month or February and December. And we got second in January and we've done a bunch of publicity. We've done a bunch of service projects. We're the most active club on campus and we're the freaking, we're, we're the Latin club. Pathetic. Like is, we are the most active club on campus. I mean, you got a you got a group of winners. You oh, just they, write it. They, these these this th these girls. It's mostly girls, and there's one guy um, who are running this club. They are absolutely phenomenal. Like they have revived this club from the ashes that Hurricane Michael, which was three years ago, and then COVID the last two years, just yeah. killed the club. They have revived it, and they are ready. It is abs. It, it's it's amazing what they've done. They they filmed a video literally a parody of um what did i miss from hamilton with the lyrics changed to the famous athenian traitorous general alcibiades and they, it's, it's just it's just nerdy greek history lyrics and they filmed the video and it's it's going to win it's going to win all of the prizes at state That's because awesome. all those nerds judging it are going to be like oh my gosh it's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, it's, incredible. it's incredible. Seriously, they brought it to regionals and the 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 teachers there, the ladies were like, whoever did that, you need to tell them to bring that to state uh, because it's nerd crap. And these nerds, they love nerd stuff. I do too. So we're um, here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. So, but it's a, you know, no, Joanna, I'm reading the same book that I've been reading since February 27th. Wait, wait. So wait, there's no rap battles at these competitions? No, they have karaoke. They should do rap battles. Um, I'd like to put a motion forward. But I'll, but I will. I'll bring it up. Be like, hey, that the Latin rap battles. They'll be like, if it's in Latin, I'll be like, well, then no one's gonna do it because no one knows any. Well, that's just, I'm saying. I want Latin rap battles. All right, I'll I'll I'll, bro I'll broach it at the meeting. So every one of these things, I have to leave the other chaperones, and I've got to go to this Latin teacher meeting where we talk about. And I have never seen. <laughs> I've never seen like. Like it's nerd rage, like the the amount of hostility between like two factions of like Latin teachers, like it's, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Like it, it is, I was, oh, like, I believe it. There, I there like, is, what is gatekeeping happening? in every community. Oh, it's ridiculous. Like, every what's community going on. It, it was just like it was just this big feud that oh, it was it was ridiculous. But I hated going to those until that happened. Now I go hoping that someone's gonna have a bee in their bonnet about some some oh, definitely order of business the last time it was about whether or not to let like the the florida like the the state organization of kids release a monthly newsletter they wanted to get rid of it and there was this big stink of like no you're gonna get rid of it or we should get rid of it or we should have a committee to decide if we're gonna get rid of it and i'm just like whatever it what is what are y'all <laughs> arguing about what is this like, see what I do teach, on that I'm really teach Latin. Like, this is what we do, guys. I look at that conflict and I go, someone thinks I'm this silly about whatever I'm actually upset about at the moment. Like, you you know, when you see so, like someone at the supermarket throwing a big, what do you mean my bells yeah. are $6 a pack now? Yeah. You know, and you're just like, what a goof. And then I think about the last time I was being a goof. And I think it's a good time to self reflect. So when you see the bee in the bonnet, you get to say, you know what? Oh, I have a I have a permanent bee in my bonnet. So, but I should wear a bonnet. I wish you wear a bonnet. It's such a weird juxtaposition of these like stodgy Latin teachers because it's just like they are all so different than me. So wherever I go, and they've all got masters and PhDs and crap, and they're just very severe people. Severe, I like it. And so. They, I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm fairly certain they don't find me amusing. And they, so, li they like their own brand. Yeah. Like know. they, 
they're fine. Most of them are nice. Some of them are actually mean. Like some of them are jerks. And oh, I'm, I'm like, sure. what is your problem? Um, but there are several that I hang out with, including a girl who was from Central Florida who I met when I used to go to these competitions. She went also, and I knew her from when we That's used cool. to go separately. Now we're both teachers and we show up as chaperones. So, That's cool. Yeah. cool. Anyway, oh my gosh, there's so much Latin. No one ever needs to hear any more about that. <laughs> well, Joanna wanted to know, uh, you answered, uh, Joanna, I am reading the God is not willing starting this weekend and right. I'll finish it this week. Um, I gotta, I gotta, I, I, I guess I'll just come out with it. There's no other way to say it, folks. It's been two years and I finally hit a reading slump. I am in a reading slump. I have not had a slump in two years. It's not some big thing where like, I can't read Cause I know some people like, it's like, they can't even pick up a book. They don't want to look at it. It's not how I really work. Uh, but the perfect storm has come around, man uh between finishing Malazan, uh finishing a reread of song of ice and fire uh and just coming off those massive highs plus taking a week off when i was in vegas <coughs> uh plus things at work being a little bit weird um plus elden ring plus plus a depression it's just like this perfect storm where i'm like what's wrong with me yeah would you say, do you feel like you're in a slump now or is it more so just for you time? It's, no, it's, it's just that like, because I'm at work so long and because these children are sucking my brain dry with mm. their comment, I had no fewer than six children interrupt me while trying to defend, uh, have these other kids defend their paper being like, uh, if we're not doing anything, can I go over to spells? Can I go, can I go to this class and work on something? And I'm like, if y'all interrupt me one more time while I'm trying to ask these two children, you're going to sit there and you can't even go to the back room so sit down and wait till i'm done oh, enough special requests seriously so by the time i get home i don't have any bandwidth to do anything like except i play some i play some elden ring and i'll sit here and i'll tinker around on the internet doing nothing or i'll do a crossword puzzle and that's it that's all i have the bandwidth for so yeah. finally finally i've like come down at like midnight and so I'll read like four pages and I'll fall asleep. Yeah, so man. I'm, I'm in a slump, but it's not because I don't want to read. It's just like I am just burned out on life right now. Yeah, I feel you. I, I think there's also a little bit of fatigue. I, we were talking about this prior. Um, we'll, we can talk about at least one. Oh, half are we going here already? Well, we're going to talk about at least one half of it. Okay. Um, though, I, I, let me let me get caught up in the chat because some people, I think some people even had something to say, like something about a belated. When was your birthday? There's been some confusion. My birthday is next Friday. All right. I, that's what I thought. I thought it was next week. Okay. I feel better. My birthday is next Friday. Um, and not going to lie. I'm actually, I'm actually kind of sad because my kids usually do something for my birthday. Mm. And I have the best group of kids I've taught in forever. And they didn't do anything for my birthday, which kind of makes me sad. Um, because I'm like, now, Aww. now, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, again, I'm their t-shirt. They don't have to do anything for my birthday. But... You know, they have before. And this week has been chaos for everyone. Like many of those children take two of my classes. So they have had two presentations to go on. And plus, you know, there's just a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they just slip their minds. But still, I'm just like, I, I'm holding out hope for them. It sounds like you get a good group of kids, man. No, they're, fan they're fantastic. And everyone here next Friday, guys, remember, we all have to go and spam out on every possible facet. Um, because this is a big birthday, right? This is a big one. Oh, no, stop. Yes. It's I keep forgetting. Thing. And then I remember and I'm sad again. Yeah. The end of the Last, decade. Yeah, I'll have to put a four. I'll have to put a four in front of my freaking age, which is irritating. Like, but you irritating. look good. You look good, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Like you're still Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Phillips, the Chad, as he as I learned talking Chad. to him. Philip was a joke. he was a jock. I, I laughed know. so hard when you were like, "So, how did you bully yourself?" Yes, yeah, you seriously. How, did, like, how does he? How did he reconcile the two halves? He might, like he must have given himself wedgies, being like, "Oh, nerd." Yeah, you he know? you know he kicked the kid in the in the pants, but then give him a library card, like certificate yeah, or something, yeah, exactly. or a ticket to the uh, book fair. Of the book fair, uh, Monica says, "Does changing the genre help with your reading slumps?" Well, it's funny you say that, Monica, because I actually did. I mean, I'm reading Sun Eater, and I and I know it's fantasy, but I'm reading Dresden. And here's the thing, folks. Um, I say reading slumps, and again, like it means different things to different people. I'm loving what I'm reading. I 
I got to say, I'm really enjoying Grave Peril, which we mean we can talk about in here in a little bit, talk about Dresden. Um, but Sun Eater is awesome. It's tremendous. I just wish that I uh, could read more than like 10 pages at a time. I'm usually someone that can sit down and read 100 pages in a sitting. Uh, but right now it's not happening. It's uh, it's just not happening. And Zibby said, oh, Jimmy, even manga. No, uh, Berserk is, manga is different. It's just different. It's yeah, different. it's yeah, it's been like I... I am um, because I've just been having so much trouble. I uh, uh, I have Grave Peril downloaded as on, on audio, but I did. I like. I was just like, I can't handle any of this. So <laughs> instead, I've been listening to um, another SPQR book two of the SPQR, like uh, like Roman, like historical fiction mystery novels. No, what's SPQR? SPQR is the it's it's Senatus Populusque Romanus. It's the the motto of the Roman Empire. You see, it's on the manhole covers. Okay. Uh, okay. Freaking, the the neo Nazis always like try to co opt it and be like, oh, the Romans. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding? The Romans what? would hate you. Like the Romans would, they would hate you, neo Nazi freaks. Um, yeah, seriously, it's what the it's what the white supremacists always like co opt. Like SPQR, we're the new Rome. I'm like, you're not. They just came out of nowhere. <laughs> what seriously? Like, I'm I'm a member of a of a like of a uh, Latin teacher Facebook. Oh, thank group. God online a no a latin teacher facebook group <laughs> online and they're constantly talking about like well there are like hate groups using uh, like appropriating roman stuff i'm like that's not my problem like it's not my problem that that the hate groups are taking crap from rome that's a problem with them like that doesn't mean that that we shouldn't have our roman spqr flag here because the the romans aren't the same as your weird neo nazi right, right like it's not the same thing so no. it's a series of books that is just it's it's just, it's a Roman detective novel, essentially. It's like a noir, Ro it's a noir book set in ancient Rome. And uh, like the historical value of it, like the stuff they describe in the historical like culture of, of like living in Rome is brilliant. The mystery is kind of dumb, uh, but you know, it's a dude who's hanging around Caesar and Cicero and all these people in the last century BC. And the audio narrator is great. It's John Lee. And oh, cool. uh, it's just like, I'm Quintus Cecilius Metellus, or sorry, Decius, Decius, uh, Decius Cecilius Metellus. And he talks just like that in this tone of voice. And that was Gaius Julius Caesar came up to me and he was <laughs> quaestor of the year 63 BC. It's it just, almost sounds like Jonathan Keeble a little bit. Uh, he does kind of sound like Jonathan Keeble. Yeah, a little bit. Jonathan Keeble is amazing. <sighs> what? What a Jonathan stud. Keeble is amazing. Oh, what Devil, a... Devil, you're so stupid, Devil. <laughs> <laughs> Women um, are for birthing babies, Devil. <laughs> Benjamin, thank you for the 15 spots. Very generous of you. Says next season is Jeopardy wishlist. Jimmy versus AP versus Philip. I would be terrified to have AP on Jeopardy. <laughs> well, when I'm we talk up, when we talk about sec sections, what does a section mean? Like we need to really, th we need to define what a. <laughs> what what, is oh, a genre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Billy, like, I almost did. I was gonna do an Irish accent, and I was like, yeah, "I'm not like, gonna I can't, do that." I can't, I can't I'm just not, too much. AP. It'll come out Jamaican. It's just, just everything I do is Jamaican. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Jamaican student once, and I was so excited. Um, and I was like, "I was like, Chanel, Chanel, hey man!" And she's like, and she just rolled her eyes like back in it. And I'm like, I bet you get tired of hearing. She's like, we hate it. Like when they, when, when tourists visit Jamaica, she's like, we hate it because everyone always says, Hey man to us. And we hate it. So <laughs> I would much. imagine so, so much. So I would always bug her. I'd be like, Janelle, Hey man. And she's just like, Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, she would shake her head and laugh at me. At least it's ironically though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like if, if, if it bothered her, I would, I would not do it. She didn't care. So that was funny. Um, Brett says Elden Ring is going to be the death of booktube. I, I just want to put this out there. I actually don't like play games that much anymore. Like I just read, but Elden Ring has been just something I've been really excited about. Like, so it's, it's the most hyped I've been for a game since like, I don't know, since I used to play games like in 2016. Um, Elden Ring is definitely eating in a little bit, but it, it's really been more like just finding the focus, you know, and I, I'm saying this while I've already, you know, I'm going to probably end up finishing five books this month. So it's not like I'm not getting through the books. It's just a more of a feeling of um not am, connecting yeah i'm really hoping to to use spring break but the problem is is my students as i was leaving were counting the stacks of papers that i have to <laughs> fortunately most of them just need to be entered into the grade book but i have 16 stacks of paper 16 different things that need to be entered into the grade book God. including this or sorry that excluding all of the presentations that I've dealt with all week. 
Yeah, so, dude. And, and you got to you got to focus and pay attention during that. You have more of an excuse not to be focused than me. Me is just like being big sad for no reason, you know. Look, like I completely understand being depressed. I fortunately am not am not suffering one of those episodes currently, but I've 100% been there. Um, I've definitely had that. I don't want to do anything. I just don't feel right. Yeah, when you're just like, why do I get out of bed? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why, so why do I do this? <laughs> I'm hoping to get a bunch of reading done because I am still on this. I like, I'm, I'm reading the same thing for two weeks and then I've got, I need to read like what I need to read. I have to read. God is not willing. Um, yes. Uh, People for, were saying that we should read Malazan to get out of our slump. And I'll be yeah. honest with you. I'm really excited to yeah. read that book. Um, I'm going to read God is not willing so we can talk about it. And so I will, I will finish that this month. And I, I refuse to let the month pass and me not have read the third dagger and coin. I'm not going to do it. I'm not right. postponing it again. Right. Like I'm not doing it. I'm finishing right. the bloody dagger and coin. Um, right. So I actually, I actually like people have been a asking me if I'm going to like, uh, try to interview Daniel Abraham, which I didn't, I didn't think I he mean, did. I didn't think he did interviews until I saw fan addict, um, interviewed him. And I was like, I mean, I know that, um, uh, alt shift X did, but he's huge. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, I was just like, what? But I mean, I've never spoken to Daniel Abraham, like on Twitter, like he's one of the authors that doesn't really respond to like tags and stuff. And he's like, yeah. his tweets make me scared of him. Like he's just really passionate. Yeah, about his tweets, and I'm like, I would be. I'm, I'm not. I would sure. love to talk to Daniel Abraham. Same. Like, do I you want to do a joint? Do you want to do a, a duo? Do you want to tag team this? Or mayhaps, mayhaps. Let's uh, let's. If put it a, eases your nerves, I'm not trying dude, to put it on. No, let's put a pin in that because right now I need to get through this month yeah, before I do enough. anything else. Um. So, are you going to read Great Peril this month? I'm going to try, but if I get, but if it gets pushed, then I'll just do two Dresden next month because was, we're not we're not collabing till after two well i was gonna say i almost feel like we should cover the first three in our collab video oh word Let's because i think great perils way better than books one and two and i okay. think it i think books if we talk about books one and two it's gonna be very redundant yeah that's fine I'm and cool book three i am starting to understand i'm starting to get it folks i'm liking it which some people are groaning because that is a very polarizing series i hope um, i get a letter from the queen having a like seriously i'm actually 182 years old Ugh, I'm so glad you're, uh, you haven't you haven't started Enemy of God yet, have you? No, uh, that'll be after the God is not willing. Yeah, so, that's so freaking good. Yeah, forgot, was like, fantastic. Enemy of God. I don't like part one, yeah, but the rest of it has some of the has some of the best scenes in the whole series. That's exciting. I I, I the more I thought about uh, Cornwell, like especially doing that review, which by the way, folks, if you didn't check out my Bernard Cornwell review this past week. I, I I don't say this arrogantly. I said this in my Discord, and I felt I, I, people kind of agreed with it. I think it's one of my best reviews. I actually nice. think it might be my best review. Nice. Um, and after doing that review, it's also no spoiler, which is great. But uh, after doing it, I was so fired up that I and I'm really enjoying like Great Peril and Sun Eater, but I really just wanted to dump, like jump into Enemy of God because when you reflect on a book, sometimes it gets worse and sometimes yeah. it gets better. This time it got much better. I've Jimmy, since I finished uh, the Warlord trilogy, I've wanted to start listening to it again because I just loved it so much. I, the freaking Warlord Chronicles, those are three more books sitting on my floor that I have not reviewed. And I did all three of them. So I'm like, screw it. I'm going to do a, I'm going to series review is what I'm going to do. But I still haven't done it. Still haven't done it because I'm so behind on all the reviews I need to do because they're hard. And I don't have the yeah. bandwidth, as you know, like filming reviews, are the hardest freaking things to film. Yeah, and I always want to do it justice, and then I, I yes, I, exactly. Like sometimes I'm editing my reviews, and I'm like, I sound like a gibbering mouther. Like, yeah, what happens to me like, is I usually start out bad, and I start ranting because I'm excited, and then I calm down the second half of the review. But no one ever watches the second half; <laughs> they turn it off during your rant, you know. So yeah, they miss they miss it. Um, even though the uh, Cornwell review I thought was one of my best. I, I I forgot to mention some stuff. So hopefully I do like a trilogy review or something like that and get to talk uh, talk more about it. Uh, Super Gains Bros, what's up, Matt? Matt actually has made this background you see here for Chatting with Nuts and my Berserk uh, podcast that I'm doing with my buddy Andrew uh, is all created from Super Gains Bros. Uh, he's uh, pretty much one of my best friends. He's the man. Uh, he says, how many hours of Elden Ring have you played, Jimmy? So I thought it was 55, but I looked today and it's like almost 65 or so, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have it flipped. I don't know. 55 or 65, I think. Alan, how many how many hours do you have in Elden Ring? Not that many, like maybe 30. Yeah, it was a uh, last weekend 
Sunday. I played for like eight hours. Where did you see how many hours? Uh, when you go to save, it'll tell you. Oh, if it really? I guess yeah. I should look. Um, yeah. Jimmy, every time – so Romans have three names, like Gaius, Julius, Caesar. That middle – they, yes, you're right. But they're, they're, that middle one is their family name, which would be our last names. Not, our middle names are our last name. So it's called the family name. It's the clan name. It's called the G-E-N-S, G-long E-N-S. It's called the Gaines. And every time I say, these from the Claudian Gaines, someone goes, yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. not Gaines. Uh, not not going to Gainesville to ride the Swoller Coaster. <laughs> the, the, the Roman Gains. Every time some kid says it. Every time. Gregor Clegane's. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Gregor Clegane's. The Clegane's brothers. Oh, God. Yeah. And everyone in chat seems to be so excited about God is not willing. I, I'll be, I'm really excited to read that book. And knowing that Erickson's going to do it all in under 500 words, I just know that book is going to be stacked like yeah, it's gonna be I'm, good, I'm pumped too you'll finish it two weeks before i will yeah. i don't know i think i'm gonna cut back because I, I i always tell people i do 100 to 150 pages a day i think i'm gonna cut back to 50 and i'm probably gonna get less read in months but i think i'll get more out of my reading that way and it's not it's not that i skip over anything or anything like that but it's just a little less just a little less um and plus you know i have other stuff going on right now i'm also like really so whenever i get into um I don't want to make this like heavy it, it, when I, when I, uh, whenever depression like ramps up for me, I dig my heels in on things that I know have helped me, which is fitness. So I'll do an extra jujitsu class or maybe I'll go to a striking class, uh, and I'll lift more. Um, because I, I got, I have to like all these pieces and reading is a big piece of it, to be honest with you. Um, usually the, you know, the weird thing though, dude is like reading is usually the antidote. And this time it's what's eating. It's, it's taken the charge. While everything else is kind of raining down from above and we're, you know, acknowledging the sacrifice of my reading time right now. Yeah. Um, and I got to do all these things constantly just to stay at zero. Oh, just yeah. To be at sea level. I, I completely get that. I, you know usually, I mean? usually start doing things that will that I small things that I can succeed at. So right now, like right now, my self-medication is crossword puzzles because yeah. I have rediscovered my love of crossword puzzles. And like, again, I and I have Asperger's and I hyper focus on things and currently it's crossword puzzles. So when I am just feeling overwhelmed, I will literally, I have all these things to do, but instead I'm going to sit down and do a crossword puzzle because when I finish one, I feel very accomplished. I don't yes. feel completely out of control and incompetent, which is what I do for the, <laughs> with like my, the rest of my day. And sometimes I'll get up to go do something else. And I'm just like, nah, I, I'm going to do another crossword. Like I can't, I'm just going to go do another crossword puzzle. Like I haven't been able to exercise in forever. I just, Dude, do you want to get yoked? Can I train you? No, <laughs> I won't do it. You'll tell it's, me it's, like, you got to do this and this. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. That's too early. I'm not going to do that early. <laughs> like we have a, I have a like guy super into fitness, the the stats teacher at my school. He's like, he's like, Walker, you want to come work out with me? I'm like, sure. When do you go? 4 a.m. I'm like, nope, I do not. Bye. Good night. <laughs> I'm not getting, a, I'm not getting up to be at the gym at 4 a.m. I'm not going to do it. I'm too tired. <laughs> too tired. Not doing it. Uh, my wife squishes slime. That's like her thing. She's been ordering these slime things and she likes, I, I don't know why, but she, she really enjoys it. <laughs> so you could train me. Maybe I'll do like a book, uh, a book tube or a book community training group. You're like, Hey nerds, this is how to get swole. All right. Everyone grab a, Everyone grab a copy to, to green angel tower. Yeah, All right. Exactly. And just start curly. Right. The stand in the other hand. Here we go. Guys. <laughs> Two reps. War and peace. I wish I wish I had something around with War and Peace there. I don't I don't really have it. But yeah, dude, we should get you like some big traps. Like I, I'm talking, I want to see like Swole Allen. I was in better shape uh, three years ago because I I mean I did I did work out regularly, not not like you know like ugh, the Swoller coaster, but like just to just to do standard stuff. <laughs> I stop that. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> the swaller coaster is like yeah. my new favorite thing ever yeah so but i mean not anymore now i, I can't do anything and i need to because i'm 40 and i want to drop dead 
Yeah, dude. I, uh, you know, there, there's plenty of, uh, genetic things I'm probably going to have to worry about later in life. So there's definitely a piece of me now that, you know, before it was all vanity and now it's like still 99% vanity, but there's like 1%, you know, that it's like, Oh, you know, maybe I'm doing good things for my heart. Uh, possibly who knows? Yeah. 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 I, I, I want my heart to stay in good shape also. Um, the good thing is, is I've, I like, I get labs every year and they're always pretty good. My cholesterol, like, does this number like uh, is it like it's too high but it's not really it's not really really high so it's it's where you can like i could go on medicine if i wanted to but i don't have to i can try to get it down by again diet and exercise and it's not gonna be diet so it needs to be exercise uh and so i need to exercise to keep my cholesterol down because i don't yeah. want to be on cholesterol meds yeah and you everybody's tuning in like, really. listen to these two old men talking about having to go on cholesterol meds <laughs> and working out for their freaking heart. Like, this is the most riveting conversation. I know, I know. Right <laughs> well, we it's all tied back to the reading slump. I mean, I was just oh, saying. Oh, yeah, you're you right. Know, reading usually pulls me out. Like, usually, like, if I start missing workouts, something's wrong, right? Like, something's going wrong with for me, but I'm reading more and trying to make up for it. So, like, something's always propping the other thing up. If I'm good, I'm at zero and everything's net positive, like net even, rather. Um, neutral uh but just right now it's just like i don't know i don't know what it is oh alexander will has a question it says have either of you been watching the new seasons of last kingdom three episodes in and i'm loving it i can't wait to read the books i love cornwell sharp books i so i have not but i plan on watching that last season just like i plan on watching the last season of the expanse once i get in the mood to watch tv i'm not someone that watches tv year round it's like once or twice a year for about a month i'll just binge all the tv i wanted to watch for the year yeah. and then that's it i've kind of i've just come to the conclusion dude that I'm not going to be, um, you know, like arcane came out, right? Everyone had a review for, and that's cool. I have no problem with that. But for me, you know, remember people were asking us, I know you end up watching it, but like, I'm just not that guy. I can't force myself to watch TV or I hate it. Um, not because I think it's bad, but it's more like a mood thing. Like I yeah. just don't, I'm not always in the mood to watch TV. Um, but last going on, so good. Something's got to give and it's, and it's, it's yes. TV. like, yes. it's like TV is the thing I like TV, but it's the thing I like the least of all the things that I do. So um, like I finished what I watched season six of line of duty. Cause I've been waiting a year to do that. I watched arcane because uh, the, the three guys that I play gloomhaven with, watch it and i'm so sick of listening to it so i watched and it was good um i watched the last season of money heist because i didn't watch four seasons and not watch the last season um <laughs> and now you know now if i watch tv i'll watch like an episode or two of one piece uh but i have or uh, or i'll have it on the background and my smart tv has a family ties channel and i'll literally i have reruns of family ties running on in the background whenever I want and I can work because listening to family ties is not distracting. Uh, so I don't watch a ton of TV just like you. Like it's just, yeah, it comes and goes for me, man. And, and a lot of times it's me trying to fight myself not to rewatch, just rewatching the Sopranos all the time. Yeah. Oh, last kingdom. I have not seen last kingdom or read the books. I, I don't like this. Like the Saxons aren't super in, there's not super in my, my like areas yeah. of interest. So I haven't watched the show for sure. I love the sharp books, like sharp uh, Cornwall sharp books. I really like, but Jonathan Keeble, I wish he narrated the sharp books, but he narrates the last kingdom books. He narrates the Saxon books. So I may mm. check out the last kingdom just because Jonathan Keeble Alex Keeble. just started him. And he said the first, I think it was, he read the first book and he said he like blew through it. He was, oh, like, really? it was great. Now what I've heard from Patrick is they're very formulaic. Yeah, so you, they, you read a few, ready. take a break, read a few, take a break. Yeah, uh, which is cool. I like the fact that those those series exist. I feel like that way. And, and I know everyone's going to go, but Dresden gets bigger. But right now where I'm at in Dresden, it's very episodic. And I, I actually kind of like it. Like I kind of like just throwing on the audio book and being like, Jimmy. OK, Jim, just wait. Just wait till changes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, change. me and Alan, <laughs> me and Alan were like, we're going to bring in Sarah because Sarah Reeds is a huge fan of Dresden and we love Sarah. And I think she has a really cool perspective on it because of some of the complaints, right? Like yeah. that come with Dresden. I think it's appropriate to have a lady on to talk about. And uh, me and Alan both agreed on that. And me and Alan both also agreed that we don't want to hear the word changes mentioned <laughs> when yeah. we do the discussion. Yeah. I, I made sure I made sure I told Sarah, I'm like, Sarah, we can do this. Like, I hope to do this before you actually read changes. Uh, so that you wouldn't, you know, be the just wait till changes. But she's like, I promise I won't do that. I'm like, thank you, thank you. 
<laughs> it's like uh it's like the slog in wheel of time like that's everyone's like yeah yeah they're good but you gotta get ready for the slog but it's so it's like the opposite you know but everyone's like changes you just gotta wait to change it yeah so, or you know, just, or when you're reading this born era one and they're like just wait till the ending of the series and i'm like well, you'll stop like like <laughs> if y'all hadn't done that i would have thought that like that ending was awesome but y'all made it sound like it was going to be something like beyond the awesome that it was. And this so is why you'll never read Jade City. <sighs> You're never going to read it. Just embrace it. I have read Jade City. That's the Wait, thing. You did? I started the series. I read oh, Jade City right. like I read Jade City in October of uh, like October of 2020. No, that's right. I actually remember this. I never continued. That's um, right. right now, I'm. I am going to read it this year because of my wonderful friend Charmaine. I'm going to do it for Charmaine because it's her favorite series. Um, cool. but freaking 700 pages. I don't want to read 700 pages too long. And yeah, the Jade legacy thing. Every time another one of my friends reads it, it's like, Oh, this is so good. I'm like, I ain't reading it. I'm not reading it. I'm not reading that, it. That's why I haven't pushed sun eater on you. I won't, I will never push anything. Sun eater, on I want to read, I love but it. it's 700 pages, It's but it's fast. Dude, it's one of those books. <laughs> I know. I get it. I get it. Listen, I'm not going to push it on you. All I'm going to say is I get it. I just did all the melasm. They're mass. And I'm just like, so, I need a little bit of a break. Every, every time that patron wheel by. spins. So every time a patron wheel spins, 10% of that wheel is Sun Eater. 10% of the people use their use one of their votes for Sun Eater. And so. Well, it's because it's if, for you, dude. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> dude, it is, is you. So I'm kind of hoping that it lands on it on the wheel because then it's out of my hands. Yes, it's 700 pages. Right, right. But I am not choosing that. This is the patrons. I've been to their will. That's fine. Like, I'm okay with that, but I can't, in good conscience, put a 700 page book. On I, I get it. I yeah. just can't. <laughs> so, um, but I do want to read Sunny Air from everything I've heard of it, oh, but you know, people keep it. talking about it. And then I'm, and then I'm just like, I, I wish I wasn't the way I am. I hate I the way I am. I hate that I hear that something's awesome. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to read it then. Because, <laughs> because I don't I, like, I'm never like that, I, well, but I, I do, I do say, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Um, it also depends on how it's hyped. There, there's a lot about how things are hyped. Um, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, <laughs> RJ, thanks for the five spot, bro. He said, if anyone ha uh, hasn't yet, yeah, well, watch Alan's review of Touch of Light by Tiago Abdallah. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, it's one of the best self-pub debuts out there. And I've actually, I watched that uh, today and I was going to ask you, um, you know, who do you recommend that to? Uh, okay, so first of all, I actually asked him. He's poor, he's uh, from Brazil, so it's it, it. His name's actually pronounced Chiago, like C H. Chiago, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Chiago Abdallah. I was like, dang. Which, if he um, was in the UFC, everyone would just call him Tiago and yeah. would just ignore it. Yeah, yeah. Um, who would I recommend it to? Okay, so it is. So it's uh, it's hard to describe because so the biggest thing that. And I know people like I'm not I'm not trying to like dunk on self-published novel. I'm not. But we all have had the experience of reading a self-published novel that does not feel like a finished product, yes. that it felt it felt like it needed to go through someone's hands as far as like the writing style and just like just general like the why are we using so many of the same exact sentences or just like, you know what I mean? Like syntax stuff yes. it just feels very. I don't Choppy. want to say amateurish, but it just feels un, un, unpolished. Not yeah, polished. unpolished. This does not feel that way. I like the writing never felt like that. And that alone was just really surprising for me because I don't read a ton of self published, not because I don't like self published, but mostly because I'm trying to work through this backlog of crap that I want to read that I haven't read for forever. And when a bunch of people will recommend uh, a self published thing, I'll, I'll put it on my list and I'll read it. But this one, just on a lark, I picked up and I was really surprised. That's I was awesome. really surprised. It's very like, it's different. It's just, it's just different in a lot of, in a lot of ways. And it feels the, the, the prose is very polished That's awesome. and it does not dwell on anything. In fact, the biggest complaint people I've seen people have that I was like, it goes so fast that sometimes between events happen very quickly and you just feel it feels more skeletal than ah. it could be. like 200 pages or even a hundred more pages of just like, like meat between S the sitting in the moment. Right. Correct. Yeah. Could have happened. Um, 
that I think might have like would have improved it, I think. Uh, but I prefer what it was to sitting around doing nothing, staring at tables for, right. you know, right. just right. like a lot of the stuff people complain about Jordan, like describing everything they're wearing and just moving from one place to another and not really. The sway not, of the hips. Yes. And it's not even building character moments. It's just, right. Right. you know what I mean? There was none of that. And it, it was like, let's go. And, and, and I forgot to mention this in my review. If you are a fantasy JRPG player, you're fine. Um, Malazan too, actually. Bunch of buzzwords. Like the beginning, it takes a minute to get your bearings because buzzwords, which are, you know, like the, 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 just the, the terms right, I, of the world. Warns are being thrown out in the Correct. first paragraph. And you're it like, feels what like I was playing Xenosaga for the PlayStation again, <laughs> but I had my like, I had my like glossary there where I just always get your strategy guide. Correct. So that doesn't bother me, but it does bother some people when there's a bunch of unfamiliar terms up front. So it took, it took a minute to get acclimated to the world, but I think it's a really interesting world. And he does a lot that I did not expect. And yeah, it's like, there's one culture that worships, that worships life. And so they live a long time because their goddess I guess blesses them. Yeah, and you're saying like, the person blesses and they can live to like 130 or 140 years old. Yeah, and if they die, it's like, well, you lost the blessing of the goddess. That sucks. Um, and then to the <laughs> south, there's these tribes that have to, like, you have to kill the weak because if the if the evil spirit goddess in the earth doesn't get fed that lifeblood, she'll break out from her prison. So they think it's like an abomination that these ki- these people are hoarding all of that, uh, like, oh, by sh- life and vitality, living to be like 130 and crap like that. So it's really interesting. And, and there's people who ride griffins um, or like who bond with griffins. It's really, it's really interesting. Like, and how long is that? Um, 400 pages. Less than, it's like 420 pages. Uh, that's, that's the spice. That's, that's what I, I want to hear. Before, before I requested the arc, I made sure I knew how long it was because I was cool. like, I don't know this. I don't know what it is. If it's, I'm like, if it's longer than 500 pages, I'm not doing it. And it was 400 pages. And I'm like, done. I'll read it. Yeah, so, yeah, dude, I, you, you got me. You piqued my interest with it. Um, also, Alicia, thank you for the two spot. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so the thing about self pub, and I actually wanted to talk about this. Uh, I'm glad RJ brought it up. I kind of zoom out just even from this book because, uh, and one of the cool things about this book and self pub in general, they get to go with their ideas how they want them. And you do see a very wide, um, there, there's just a wide selection of very niche ideas, but also things that maybe wouldn't make it into you know tour yeah. or orbits marketing oh, scheme absolutely. for 2022 or 20 whatever it is right uh so i think that that's one of the strongest points but you also point out a good fact in my opinion that self-pub does sometimes struggle from a lack of a copy editor yeah. or a developmental editor and those things are so important and, and part um, of that is not necessarily people's fault like part of it is like no, it's, it's money expensive yeah no, no it's money it's money but it also so this is my question sometimes it's rush too though sometimes it's just rush to get to market this is what I also th- – yeah, that's true too. I, I wanted to ask you guys this to uh, Bookborn. Do you judge self-pub different when you review it? Yes, 100%. Like okay. I, 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 but I've said that – I usually say that in my self-pub reviews. Um, I judge them less harshly um, okay. because they – because I assume they have gone through fewer hands. Um, like when something is traditionally published, that thing – it doesn't have a reason to not be not be as polished as it can be, right? Like yeah. it is passing through the hands of people who have a ton of money and a ton of resources. It should be more polished. You know what so I mean? So you're you're more interested in sorry, uh, more interested in like I the idea behind it, what they're trying to do, rather than saying, is this, you know, grammar correct? Or well, now, I mean, it, if there's a lot of those mistakes, I mean I I I will talk about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, because people should know that those are there before they pick them up and read it. But I also know that my if I am going to give a star rating, which I am, I know that self-published authors, I am hurting them more mm-hmm. by giving a lower star rating than yes. I am Brandon Sanderson. That's so, why I struggle with picking up self-pub yeah. because I don't want to crap on anyone's dreams, but I also have to be honest. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, yeah. So I'm honest in my review, but if I'm if I'm like if I'm if I'm waffling between like, if I'm at a three and a half or something, like I'm going to round up to four. I'm not going to give it. Oh, I do that anyways. I was round up. Now that is why I'm really careful about reading self pub is I, I am not going to read something that I am anticipating. I'm going to have to give a a one star or two star because I don't want to do that. Just like you. So I, but usually I've just read something that I thought I was going to enjoy more than I was. 
So it ends up being like, like, you know, a three and a half or a four star uh, type thing. Um, But I actually talked to Abdallah and he, this is by design. Like he chose to go self pub, not because he, um, you know, was in a hurry or like had been rejected a bunch. He like, this is what he wanted to do. He knew his vision. Correct. Correct. His creative control. And you can see it. He's put a ton of care. His naked hardbacks are freaking gorgeous. Like he has his, the own cover he wanted. Dude, that cover's sick with the big red. It reminded me of the uh, heart tree from the yes, song. That's why yeah. I picked it up. I looked at it because of that cover. I would have not, I, if a self-published author or whatever book comes through, I would have been like, okay, I'm going to wait to listen, hear about it. But when someone revealed that cover, I'm like, that cover looks freaking awesome. And so then I went and looked at, looked about the book and you know, He's doing it the way he wants to do, but he also, you can definitely tell, because I want to talk to him uh, eventually uh, on my channel as well. Um, But he has, you know, he's gone through like the process uh, very clearly because again, like he's a, he's a good writer. And so I, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's just like all self pubs aren't bad, but we, we have to be like, we have to, the reason we have to say all self pub aren't bad is because there have been enough of that to where it has gotten a reputation. And, well, you know, yeah, you're right. And people think every time they open up one, it's going to be unpolished or whatever. Um, also, Connor, Good. there, there's an up button. Good. You got it. Only once, only once during uh, Chai with Nuts do I hit it. But um, I, I agree with you, Alan. I think the hard thing about this is, is that people, will say, oh, there's so much bad self-pub. But I got news for you, folks. There's a lot of bad pub. Oh, what? Did, did you read The Emperor's Blades? No, I'm, just I'm just Jimmy, save that for a couple weeks when we do that live show. <laughs> Let me explain about The Emperor's Blades in, in short, Jimmy. Here's the thing. I this is, this is living proof of my hypothesis about how we are affected by outside influence. Well, I, I, this is a whole topic I was going to bring up tonight. And right. it's even it's even back from um, and I'll come back to self pub because I had a couple other things. Oh, but... let's finish self pub and we'll, we'll return okay. to the emperor. OK, because I actually yeah, I actually really want to talk about this because I think it's something that the chat could help us out with. Um, but f- back to self pub real quick. I am very careful when I do review self pub work. And I, th- I think and I'm not telling anyone how to review and I am not an authority or a voice at all. I think it is very arrogant when I see bigger booktubers saying, eh, you know, you guys need to do this. So I'm not doing that. But what I am going to say is I get a little skeeved out when I see people review a self pub book and they say, no, this is as good as uh, list Dune. I don't know anything. Pick a classic. That's a five star. That's uh, the test of time has proven that it's, it's at least legible and acceptable. Yeah. So when uh, I just see so many people review and they say, you know, this, if you love this, this is going to be the next big thing. And that can be true, but I see people say it every time they read a self pup and you're doing a disservice because I've read some of these and it, it <coughs> there's typos everywhere or something. You know what I mean? Like you're setting, you're actually doing a detrimental yeah. it's detrimental to the work. I yeah. Think. So, so I, like, like you said, we both want to want to be honest in our reviews. When I review self pub, um, you can always find something. And I've had to learn how to do this when I was helping out. Um, I, I judge their mock, the theater kids at my school. I judge their mock. Uh, they go to theater competition. I, so and I'm, I'm one of the mock judges. And I've helped at the college doing this thing before. And, you know, these aren't professional actors. They're students, yes. right? Yes. So I could just tear them apart and be sure. like, but... I can always, almost always, like, especially if it's not a one-star book, I can find something that I enjoyed about it. And so I lean heavily into that. I don't ignore, I don't want people walking in blind and thinking that, like, there wasn't anything I didn't enjoy about this book. But I lean more heavily on, this is what I liked about this. This is what I liked about this. Now, some people may not like this particular part. And for me, the way this was done did not work for me. Alan, you're just describing an honest review. Like you're, yeah, you're, you're doing an honest review and, yeah. but and I believe an honest review without trashing it also. Yes. And, and I, and I will a hundred percent admit that I am definitely more tactful whenever I do have negatives about a self pub because yeah. there's no, re- I mean, you know, I get it. I get it. Yeah, uh, 100%. You know, like you said, you can, you can one star a Brando Sando and ain't going to do a damn thing against <laughs> Dragon I mean, Steel. You could one star, you could get, you could get a thousand accounts one starring Brando Sando. It's still going to matter. 
You're right. You're make $28 million. Now, does that mean we should five-star trumpeteer every self-pub because we want to – no, no. And that's what I – I guess that's my point, right, is like we have to also be careful to – not, I'm not not honest because I do think people are always honest, but also really take a think, take a look back and say, okay, if someone is reading this for the first time, mm -hmm. are they going to be impressed? Like, yeah. you know, it, it coming into self pub because there's some self pub I've read that I truly believe is like amazing. Like, yeah. I think sort of Kaigen's one of the best books I've ever read. Pub self pub pub doesn't matter. Like, those are the best self pubs when you don't care whether it is or not, yeah. right? Um, but it, we just have to be. Well, Look, Studious. I enjoyed reading Touch of Light more than I enjoyed the experience of reading Emperor's Blades. Which is so, what we're talking about, Beard of Bookworm, by the way. He said uh, Touch of Light um, by Tiago... Yeah, Tiago Abdallah. Tiago, sorry. I said it but right. It's, it, he's like, if you don't see it written down, you'll look up C-H-I-A-G-O. It's T-H-I-A-G-O. Yeah. Abdallah. Um, so, yeah. So, it's, you know, like, and again, I gave it five stars, but, but I gave it four and a half. But on Goodreads, I'm like... I'm like, I'm going to help him out and just round it up to five stars because I did enjoy it, but I didn't give it five. I gave it four and a half because there were things that I was, you know, like wanted those sitting in the moments, like let's have these characters talk before like we move on to the, the very yeah. next, like, you know, uh, mad thing that goes on. Uh, but he's, I mean, he's hard at work on it. I uh, like, I think the next one is coming relatively soon um, and I'm excited and it's talk always to him about talking to him about it and being like, do you have any, he's like, do you have any theories for like, uh, like who's responsible for this thing? And I'm like, so help me if it's this person, I will be very upset. Um, he's just a cool guy to talk to. You know, I like it when authors are excited. To, I mean, to talk Accessible. about the work as most of them are, he's a super nice guy. Yeah. Rocky was so excited last chatting with nuts, like talking about his work. It's, it's honestly, it's, in, it's, it's kind of contagious. Yeah. See, I'm excited uh, to read that and then talk to him about, his about the you know the roman in, in inspiration stuff obviously yeah um because oh know, dude my wheelhouse yeah. it'll be all it'll be on it'll be on with you'll love it he it'll seems be... intimidating though like no. i tend i talk i talk to very jovial people who are not intimidating like intimidating people are intimidating, intimidating. Like, <laughs> like, daniel, like daniel, daniel abraham and uh nah you'll be fine man <laughs> you'll be fine i i i um I also think we should, I guess, what I, one thing I kind of want to clear up. I'm not saying you shouldn't one-star a self-pub, by the way. So yeah. I hear that and say, we're saying, no, you can one-star it. I'm just saying that whenever I, like, if I were to one-star it, I wouldn't say one-star this book is a heaping pile of elephant dung. You know, I would, I would try to give some sort of constructive feedback because you know they're reading it um, and maybe they do want to improve because you never want someone just to stop, mm -hmm. you know, their dream. So. And I'm not saying don't put out bad review. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, I'm actually kind of saying the opposite. I think yeah. we should be careful with our praise because you don't want to oversell something because it could leave a rot. Yeah, I, we smell. do see a lot in the other direction where people are just like, you know, it's like, oh, it's, it's self-pub. Boom, five star. Boom, five star. Boom, five star. Yeah, I, I think, think that's more harmful, I correct. guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, because because then, people, then people who aren't – because we as booktubers, we are cognizant of what we are doing and how it affects things. But if we get people – who are, who like, you know, have no, they have no stake in anything. They don't care about like, you know, people's any of that. They don't care about being like, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know what the word is, but like being conscious, being just moderate in there, in there, in there, just being conscious of, yeah, of the other stuff, being conscious of what's going on. Yeah. And then you'll get a bunch of people read it and be like, I hate this book. I was sold that it was going to be awesome. One star, one star, one star, one star. Well, and maybe it's just as simple as saying this is a five-star self pub book. You know what I mean? Maybe having two different scales yeah, is exactly. appropriate. And, I th and I'll be honest, I think it actually is. I don't read enough self-pub for this to really yeah. matter on my channel, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I don't want to read self-pub. It's just, I'm, yeah, I got yeah, a backlog, wanna, folks. You want to watch out that like, people are like, you don't support. I, I, do, I do, but I, I only read four books a month. Like, yeah. when you when, if I read 22 books a month, like freaking Andrew. I haven't read Name of the Wind yet, folks. <laughs> I, got, I got a backlog. Have you really? Yeah, I'm reading it this year. Nice. Yeah. yeah. But if I read 22 books a month like Andrew, half of them would be self-pub. But I got I got four, and I'm in the middle of a bunch of series that I'm trying to freaking finish. Um, but I think you and I also try to one – we one-star proof our self-pub reads. We don't pick up one that we're going to – Oh, I fit everything, by. dude. Oh, well, that, that's not even self-pub. That's, that's traditionally pub. That's why I don't have a bunch of one-star books. One-star books – if I one-star a book, it's generally because – it was a punishment book because I love challenges and, or it was, you know, something that I read as a, as a, you know, part of a read along or, or a buddy read or um, yeah, like a patron pick, which I haven't found. My patron picks have been nice. My patron, since I've been, doing, dude. 
since I've been doing them, mine yeah. have been the first one was Tagano. Yeah, Tagano was the first one, which you know I dropped, but then I finished it finally in December, and it's great. Love Tagano. Love Tagano. I'm so glad I got to pick it up. Simon Vance, brilliant. Um, and then next it was freaking Winter King, which and then I was like, oh. <laughs> then it was recursion. Blake Crouch, which was an easy read. Blake Crouch is ridiculous. I want to read that so bad. Was, Blake Crouch is someone I really want to get into because his novels are quick, they're fast. And, and you'll read it in a day. Like you could read I'm it in a day. Like I'm in. if you read 150 pages of fantasy in a day, you can read 300 of Blake Crouch in a day. Yeah, Blake um, Crouch is on, on the list. And then it was theft, uh, theft of Swords, the first Ryuria book, and yeah. I liked that too. And now yeah, my, I'm reading. Hold on, what did I read last month for Patron? I don't remember. Go ahead. I'll, I'll think of it. While you're well, I was just going to say my patrons have also been excellent. Even stuff that like, I wouldn't say was like a mega hit with me. It's like, yeah. they're still good books. Like send Linda sends. Wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. That's a good book. Like yeah. I was happy. I read it and I wanted it's to read yours. It. It's not your thing. Yeah, yeah. It just isn't my thing, yeah, which is still, funny. Still I, like it though. I see people in, in chats say, Oh yeah. Jim, Jimmy hated send I, I have like, seen, I've seen that. People have told me I'm like, y'all know I'm friends with Jimmy. I right? never said that. Like, yeah, I just, I, I just didn't care about it, dude. You can't, it's, it's like the, look, that's just how this is though. My students do that too, Jimmy. They're coming like, huh. they're like, uh, this kid hates you, Mr. Walker. I'm like, why are you freaking telling me that? Like, like, and also no, they don't like, yes. Okay. I'll talk about this later. I'll talk about this later. Remind me to come back to chat. Remind me to come back to the story about, uh, the assassination game. We'll talk about it later. Um, <laughs> Oh, the company, the KJ Parker, the company book uh, oh, yeah. I read in February, and it was one of my favorite KJ Parker books so far. But all my patrons get really pissed when like a KJ Parker book comes up because I'm the only one that reads them, and it's only me and Zara who get really. Well, excited. you have me, you have me intrigued in KJ Parker. It's just I got to fit it in at the right time because I know what type of books he writes, yeah. right? From hearing you, yeah. and I got to be in the mood. Yeah, what? Well, it's like Abraham. I got to be in the mood for Abraham. I can't. I'm not gonna force a long price quartet. I'm gonna word, read it whenever I'm in the mood. Word. You know. Yeah. Which so, is so are we transitioning to how have we been talking for an hour already, Jimmy? What is this? I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, how are we talking for an hour? All right, so uh, this is the elephant in the book tube. Uh, Jimmy and Alan, did either of you purchase the Brandon Sanderson Kickstarter? If so, did you get the whole year of Sanderson? What tier did you get, Alan? Are we are we going to go back to Emperor's Blades in a minute? Yeah, yes, I okay. am. Yeah. Um, so, um. I've only read Mistborn. Like that's all. That's all I've read. I've only read Mistborn Era One. I badly want to finish reading the reading the Sanderson books because Cosmere people are the most casual spoiler people on the face of the planet. Like if they know something about Cosmere, they're gonna talk about it. They're gonna talk about it as if you should have seen, as if you should see it on the news, as if it's like everyone. And I get it. Like you're probably safe. Everyone's probably read Brando Sanderson's books, but like I. They are so casual with their spoiler dropping. I'm just wheel like, of time does it too. Oh, do they? Okay. Oh yeah. Um. So I was like, I haven't read. I got all these other books I want to read, and so I wasn't going to. But then I'm like, Alan, imagine how left out you're gonna feel if you don't. And I'm. And then I was. You like, left me alone because I didn't order. I did. You leave you alone. You son. I couldn't do it, Jimmy. Now, no, no, now. I did not. The last time I you'll ever be on this show, I, can tell you that. I did not pay that much money for those freaking hardbacks. I don't want hardbacks. I want mass market paperbacks. Brandon Sanderson. Why is there no an MMPB version? Now, now, like, if he releases a normal version, and I hear one of them's good, I will pick it up. Yeah. Um. I bought the. I I got the ebook tier, so that's it. I paid forty bucks. That's it. And you know what? I can I could deal forty books on. Um. I can deal with forty books. Forty bucks. That's fine. And the thing is, if I'm not caught up then I won't even read them, Jimmy. So don't worry. Like, they're just safeguard, just in case. Well, realistically, there's no way I read Stormlight this year. There's no way. There's no way I'm reading Stormlight this year. Like, when would I read it? I, 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 listen, I love the book community. I love what we do here. I love talking to everyone. I got a little fatigued. Alan, I got a little fatigue. I got a oh, okay. So we're gonna talk about this, and then we're gonna loop back. Yes, to and then we're gonna loop back. Wait, gotcha. I got a little tired, Alan. Why? Uh, you mean didn't didn't Brandon Sand Brandon Sanderson change publishing? I I got a little tired, man. Um, <laughs> and I don't mean this as a bad thing to anybody who is excited because I think this is a, such a cool idea. The I, idea that you're getting something every quarter and everyone's gonna get it at once. I, I mean, can't. it is. 
a tremendous idea. It's a book club. I just, I love it. So I, I need to really state that. And that's not, um, you know, that's not me just saying that. I really genuinely think this is such a badass idea. However, can something just be something? No. Can it just be the year of Sanderson? We're probably going to get storm like that here too. I mean, that's amazing. Because Jimmy, it's the 24 hour news cycle. Content must be made. Like, and, and it's fine if people want to do that, but like this guy, it, the problem is it comes down from the, it comes down from the big ones. Like when, when the big channels like say something, it filters down and then it's everywhere. Like every time Bookborn posted, uh, Bookborn and Michael both made videos about, you know, is Sanderson changing publishing? Probably not. I sent them, a, I responded to their Instagram story saying, no, why do people think I did too. I I'm did like, too. No, not. Poor book I born. don't understand why people think it's going to. Well, she agrees with us, though. She actually takes our stance. But... Only Sanderson, George R. R. Martin, maybe Rothfuss, and Stephen King could maybe pull it off. It's not going to change. It's not going to change publishing at all. Yeah, like, it... this just gives another avenue for super, like, really, really popular authors who have teams of people to do this crap to do it and expecting expecting other authors to write extra books and then like that is it's madness it, it, also it's this madness. is not me and alan saying that we're getting fatigued from sanderson i i don't have to read the books there's no reason to get fatigued by that so yeah. i'm not saying that because i see people <laughs> connor is, is connor but jimmy hates brandon sanders confirmed confirmed no i love all over, all over the blogosphere i put it in my discord right now i'm jimmy talking about the fatigue confirmed? <laughs> Please stop. the fatigue of this conversation uh and alan you had a word for it and i really enjoyed it and it, it, it would be a parroting of of a certain talking point and then it, it, but hmm what we do as people like it is and it's important to have conversations around these things yeah. it is but i was just uh i was done with it guys i was done with it like day two um you know obviously daniel green put out a video um, i honestly think that if he hadn't put out that video we would not have had a bunch of people saying that he was going to change that sanderson was changing publishing because i i don't think that i don't even know how we got there a really hyper popular fantasy author who is known for his productivity, treated his, like, you know, anxiety by writing four extra books, which is freaking cool. This isn't Miles Cameron or yeah. Stephen Ariant that did a Kickstarter and made $10 million. You yeah. know, these are successful authors, right? But, like, that would be the next echelon for them. You yeah. Know, it but it's like a a, 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 a mid-list author would never be able to do that. This is this is almost exclusively a Sanderson thing. He's like, it's not gonna change publishing because publishers are not going to put a bunch, they're not gonna put millions of dollars behind a mid-list. And people author. are forgetting that uh there are services that a publisher gives you when you are traditionally published. And it so happens to be things that we've already talked about tonight, which is editing. Editing is so important. We know yeah. it is not just copy editing, but developmental editing. Yeah, and those services are provided by the publisher. Yeah. And Sanderson has his team like, and when he made his contract with a uh, tour or whatever, he said like in his contract, he, he would, he would be able to self-publish stuff if he wanted to, like some self-publish some stuff as well. That's in his contract. Like everyone can't do that. Like he can. And yeah. he also has built this empire that is this well-oiled machine. He has the ability to do that. And to expect- Which is awesome. It is awesome. It's awesome. I, please understand, we are not knocking Sanders. Not at all. And not even a little not bit. not knocking other authors. And nope. we're also not knocking people's excitement. Nope. But it, like, it is, it is a cool thing that is not going to change the landscape at large. Why can't it just be a cool why. thing? Why can't it, it just be a cool thing? Because it can't. Because it can't. Because sensationalism. That's why. That's why. <laughs> like the game has to be changed. It's the it's the freaking cotton gin. You know, it, it, and if, it, printing <laughs> press has been invented. No. And if you're if you're watching this and you made a video like that, I'm not I'm not dissing you or I'm no, not, no, I'm no, not no, trying no. to tear I you down born and Michael's video. Yes. I thought there it's all good. Like I have no problem. It was just like, by, you know, I felt like I got it, uh, by day one and I just felt some fatigue. And then you add on the fact that George R. R. Martin comes out on not a blog and says, Hey guys, I don't just work on wins. I do these other things. And I'm very in depth with that community outside of just booktube. Like I'm in that I'm in a bigger niche of another niche. Right. Yeah. And I'm exhausted. Dude. 
I'm just, uh, I, I'm exhausted from people, uh, either hating germ or pretending not to care yet commenting a hundred times. Uh, so with that, plus like the redundancy of did this change publishing forever, even though I've never worked in the publishing industry, oh. I, I just, I was, uh, also checked out Alan. I'm not going to lie. It didn't, it didn't like I, um, I've, I've watched, uh, Michael's and book and, uh, Hillary's and, because they're good because like, again, when they posted their, 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 uh, thumbnail, I'm like, why are people saying that it is, why does this video even need to be made? Like, why does, why do we need to make a video saying, no, it's not genuine publishing. I thought we just all understood that. Uh, but we did not. Oh yeah. Jimmy hates book two was conf uh, clearly, I, we yeah, all yeah. heard you say that you hate both. We heard you mention by name, Michael and Hillary and your contempt for them. Uh, Joanna says, I don't remember what the changing publishing argument was. Can someone refresh me on what publishing is supposedly changing? Do you want to? So the, from what I understand it, it's going to change publishing because um, it's saying that all authors and publishers need to uh, make social media like YouTube channels and this social media and this extra stuff that authors do, this extra interaction that they need to be pushing that more on their on their authors which like, is not wrong yeah but authors have so much to do and some people don't like freaking social media you know like not everyone wants to make a bloody youtube channel and you know i i guarantee sando don't he doesn't set up and tear down his video equipment every time he needs to every time <laughs> he's done filming the way the rest of us do dude's got a movie studio in his freaking house you know like it not everyone has the bandwidth and remember most I'm authors more. most authors have full-time jobs that yes. aren't writing so if you want to look at a better example of this, it's Will White, which Star actually brought up. She said Will White's uh, video was good as well in response to Sanderson's video. I, uh, so basically he came out and was like, "Here, you know how Sanders had a big pie chart he did to break down? His was like 70% Oreos. It was, dude, it was so, I've never read a Will White book in my life. I have them all because he gives them away for free all the time. Yeah. I have them. I'll read them one day. But this dude seems so genuine. And like, it wasn't like a snarky response to Sanderson. It was like, here's my take of what yeah. I did instead. I yeah. ate a lot of Oreos and this dude, he's releasing a special, someone can correct me. It's like some kind of special hardback for the cradle series. And that dude That's has got cool. $315,000. That That's is a better cool. example than Sando. Yeah. That's impressive. That's cool. Yes. Like he's got, you know, he's got 10, he's got the 10 cradle books out a hardback. That, that's awesome. Um, yeah. But look, I mean, like he's, he's written these 10 books Thanks, that have been over the course of several years and he got, he's got 315,000 and then, you know, and I, who knows how long it's been. And, you know, Sando has 29 million or whatever, like, and the whole thing of like expecting, like every author is not going to make a Kickstarter now to help out with their, their thing. Cause no one's going to back them. Like you yeah. can't expect every author to bankroll everything via, it's, it's just not, it's not reasonable. And a like, I, do, I just don't understand. Like, I don't understand. And, and I'm not, and if anybody thought that it was, that's fine. Like, I'm not trying to, I also, I, we are I, certainly not dissing on anybody. It's just, no, I did not understand where it was, where it was coming from. No, it, I, I think the bigger thing is like, obviously like, you know, Daniel Green puts out a video and then it becomes like, well, maybe that's a thing. And I just, I just don't know if there was really like, I don't say that. I don't think that there's nothing about that video that is true or, or correct or a good point or something like that. I just think the hyperbolic statement of it's going to change the publishing yeah. industry, yeah. To, you know, forever. Yeah. Ah, is it say, though? saying that being active on social media is, is that's also a, not a revolutionary idea. Correct. But being active on social media, that is a good thing to help authors connect with their readers. That's true. That's true. But again, like you said, that's not new. And it's also, that's not revolutionizing the publishing industry. The traditional publishing industry is going to be fine. It's going to like they are going to make safe bets like they do. And yeah, and the authors that sell a ton, that's what they're going to put their money behind, because if they didn't, they wouldn't have any money to do anything with the with the mid the mid list authors. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're not going to pour 20 million dollars into an author that they think is only going to sell like 2000 copies or even, even a hundred, like even like 50,000 copies. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're, and, and, you know, I think that it could be an Avenue like Will White is obvious. I, I would assume that's a great pool for him. Like I imagine that, and that's it'd be a great pool for all of us. Right. Um, so I think, I do think it's an option. So maybe it would be better that, Hey, there's a new option for people who have cultivated this. And maybe it's something you should do. If you're wondering where the pieces are not falling for you. 
Yeah. Um, but I saw Brian McQuellen come out and he, he even said like, I'm in the top so many percent sold in fantasy and this would not work for me. And he listed all the reasons why. And actually you, you hit it on the head, dude. It's time. Um, and no, I do not hate Daniel Green. That is not confirmed. confirmed. I heard Daniel it. Green. Hey, I've asked Daniel Green if he wanted to come on the show. I don't think he ever read the message, but he's more than welcome to come on chatting with nuts. I think we would have a great conversation. That'd be hilarious. I think he lives. That'd be in interesting. Me. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I I agree with you. It is it is an it is an addition to what we are all already doing. It is a new avenue. It is just an extension of options for those who are established. It's not affecting what's happening here at the base it just isn't yeah and and all and you can say all of this while being excited for all the sando fans that are doing this and also being really excited that a book is the number one kickstarter of all time that is the best thing that is awesome this, that is freaking awesome yeah absolutely it is it absolutely, absolutely is and um and yeah so i um yeah i like brandon sanderson i like i like brandon sanderson probably more than you do um uh at I least if- dude i love stormlight Okay, so it's just like, like, I like I love Stormlight. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. Like not everything he does is a home run for me. Correct, and I and the thing is, people have said, and what I do like is that most Sanderson fran- fans, East Sanderson super fans, will at least admit that they they don't love everything he's ever written. Um, because you know, like if every if everything he's written is the best thing ever, I I can't I can't. Read hey, listen, it. even Robin Hobb for me, you know, I love Robin. You don't, Hobb. You, don't you don't love Dragon Keeper? I don't love Dragon Keeper. Why? I thought Rain Wilds was the best. I heard you say confirmed that Rain Wilds. Was I know the some top people fantasy series. I feel like there are a lot of people who actually like Rain Wild Chronicles quite a bit, and I'm glad. But I th- that's just an example. So whenever I say, hey, I didn't love book two and three of Mistborn. It yeah. doesn't mean that I uh, yeah, again. It doesn't mean I hate. Yeah, Sando. Right? So yeah, so I I am I am very keen to read Mistborn Era Two because it just sounds right up my right in my bailiwick with like you know the style like the the certain like you know genre stuff that happens that I like. So I am gonna uh, try to catch up for that one, and then Stormlight. Maybe I'll be caught up by the time Five comes out, or maybe I just want to be avoid being trampled by the herd because. Uh, Oh my gosh! Like, I don't know. I don't, I just need to know crap about Cosmere so people stop spoiling crap. I just I just need to. I, I will to. say this, man. It's a really exciting once you're caught up and like you get to like watch the Lost in Discovery or like even the Seventeenth Shard. I like I like Lost in Discovery. Um, his presentation. Uh, everyone knows I'm biased. Christian's like one of my best friends. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I it just when you get into it, it's kind of fun. Um, uh, because if you think about like the big epic series that are going on that are selling. It's really the only one that's doing it like this big right now. Yeah. You know? So it's it's an exciting time. I think I, I know you would enjoy it, but I also understand because they're massive. They're I am massive. just trying to get through. Like there are ser- here are the series that I'm going to finish before I can start this. I need to finish. I'm going to finish Dagger and Coin. I'm going to finish Dagger and Coin. Um, I'm going to finish Dagger and Coin. I'm going to finish Blackwing the series. Um, Ooh, that, yeah, Blackwing sounded really good. You'll you'll, you'll love Blackwing. I, um, I, and it's sure. and it's three hundred. It's three hundred and forty pages. Um, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Um, so I'm gonna finish Blackwing, uh, that series. I'm going to finish uh, Dagger and Coin, and then I'm going to finish. Um, oh, um, Spellslinger. I need to finish De Castell's, um Oh yeah, uh, right. younger series. Uh, because I read the first one and I just I just love Dick Estelle's writing style. It's swashbuckling. It's for me. It's not for everybody, but it is for me. And I, I really like it. Um, and so I'm going to finish those. I'm determined because I have started them and there is no excuse for me not finishing these series. I'm sitting here looking at my series list to make sure there's nothing else. And then after that, what series are we talking about? I'm going to pick up. Oh, I'm going to read Mistborn Air 2 also. Oh, and I, well, I guess I'm reading another freaking series on my channel. Uh, because as you know, we, we abandoned, this is a good segue back into Emperor's Blades. We abandoned Emperor's Blades and we started a new one. Uh, we're going to start a new one and that's fine. I've read them before. I'm excited to, uh, I'm excited for other people to read them because, so it's, it's a good choice. I think because just because I'm trying to do the whole Flintlock thing of like, you know, be the, be the Flintlock expert um, on that subgenre. And so it's a Flintlock fantasy series and it's one of the two really kind of quintessential Flintlock series. Cause you've got the powder mage and then you've got, um, uh, then you've got the powder mage and then, um, and then this one shadow campaigns, yeah. which is Napoleonic wars with demons. Um, and it's, 
exceptional. Like I, 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 I loved it. I, I loved it. Freaking book four is like it's like Napoleon's invasion of Russia uh, in the winter. Book four is literally it's 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 a war. What's, and what's this series? It's called The Shadow Campaigns by Django Wexler. Okay, uh, I actually own those on ebook. Really? The, the, well, if you would like to, if you would like to read the first book and see what you think, we are reading it. Is it April? Yeah, it ain't happening. Yeah, well then it ain't read. happening. Unfortunately, try. April's packed for me too. You could yeah. try. You could try to read it in May. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll take a uh, peek because I've been very interested in Django Wexler. I've heard a lot of good things. To be fair, Jimmy, I may actually have to move my read along to May because I'm so packed in April, and I think I'm gonna. And I, with what's happening now, I'm gonna be behind. In, yeah, I'm reading Fire and Blood in April. April. That's oh like yeah. So pages. I may move it to May. So if you have room, okay. uh, feel free to check it out. Um, you. I 100% guarantee you will like it better than Emperor's Blade. You have the money back guarantee right here. Money back guarantee. Only it has 95. There's a like there's a kernel. It's it's there's a, I love the genius strategist character and there's one in this. And so he's he's my favorite. Janice Bet Balnich. He's a um Janice is a great. I think of Janice Slint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's oh yeah. Um but he's a great it's a great character. It's it's really good. Yeah. I like um I like it. So you heard it here. Um, read along. April or May? Really, it's looking like May because I'm because I'm so behind on my reading in March. Um, read along. Shadow Campaigns, one of the quintessential Flintlock fantasy series. Um, it's very good. I now I didn't I didn't love book five. Some people will. I didn't love it. Um, but I do not in any way regret reading the series because even the parts I didn't like about book five did not in any way like, especially for the books three and four. I love books three and four. Fantastic stuff. So, um, uh, the Ty, Ty wants to know why you don't talk about One Piece. Okay, let me explain why I don't I think we should actually address this. Let me th let, let explain why you're a one. huge One Piece fan. Yes, I've been watching One Piece for 20 years. Um, when I started watching One Piece, uh, they were in uh, Araba uh Alabasta. Um, so there's like 60 episodes when I first started back in 2000. Dude, that's half your life. <laughs> I know, I know. I was, in, I was, I just started college when I started watching. Huh. Um, and so I've watched it off and on. And then I, I I will go a couple years without watching, and then I'll catch up a bunch, and then I'll watch it. So I'm I'm in Reverie. So I'm on like episode eight seventy nine or something, and there's like a thousand seventy six. No, there's less than that. It's like a thousand forty something. So I'm about a hundred and sixty episodes behind. Um, I don't read the manga because part of what I really love about One Piece is the I think the um the seiryu the uh, the voice actors for mm -hmm. uh, One Piece are so good at their job. And so, yes, there's a lot of filler. Yeah, it's dumb. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of episodes where they repeat themselves. I get it. But what it does, what the anime does really well, I prefer to reading. Because I think the old lady that plays, because it's an, it's an old woman that plays Luffy. She is so good. And she adds so much just charm to that character that I, I tried to read the manga because I was so behind. And my brother won't shut up about me not being caught up. And I read the Zoe arc on manga and then i was like i can't do this i gotta go back and watch it because it's just not the same it's just not the same and so the reason i'm talking about it on my channel is one i don't have a lot of i don't have a lot of time to really talk about the, the books two when i when i was i was literally planning one piece content on my channel when all of the huge booktubers all of a sudden started talking about one piece and i will never be accused of trying to copy trying to jump on a fad uh, like I just can't. Yeah. My inner my inner hipster won't let me. So even though I wanted to talk about One Piece, I wasn't gonna do it because you know because all the all the like they, there was just a fad where all of the booktubers were jumping on talking about One Piece, and I'm like, people, it doesn't matter what the truth is. People will think I did it to try to like catch the wave. And I'm yeah, like, I know I know the people that feel that way. That have been long time fans like you uh, yeah. that kind of feel the same way, and that, that's a weird thing, right? Say like, you, thank you. I say you is a freaking dragon god of the east. Sorry, <laughs> I I personally think, man, that you should make whatever content you want because I know the people who enjoy One Piece would would benefit from having you well, talk. The about fad's it. over, so I probably will now that the the big bubble is kind of burst. <laughs> Benjamin says, "DJ Murphy purposely ruined Alan's One Piece content confirmed." <laughs> We're just naming names. Uh, Wright's project is the second highest funded by a fantasy author, close to 440,000. Wow. It does give authors a different avenue to get out from the stranglehold the publisher have them under. Yes, Terrence, I would agree. Um, I would agree. 
it's not so much that it isn't a big thing and another avenue and opportunity. It's just, I don't think it's going to change the publishing industry forever. That's all. Just, yeah. You know, but, but, but if Will White did not have an extremely successful, uh, a bunch of extremely successful self-published series, he would not have 440,000 Kickstarter. If you were just trying to ignore the publishers and say, I, Hey, I have this random book. Yeah. No one's ever read anything that I've ever written. No one's, no one's going to fund you. Like, yeah, it's really almost like your sophomore year. Off. Yeah, it's almost like your sophomore year is probably more benefit. Uh, you're you're going to have a bigger benefit going to Kickstarter after you're established, which I mean is big, right? Because then you re-sign deals and all these things and timetables. I, I mean, it's not to say that it's not important or it, it doesn't have an impact. Um, it's just more so it, does it uh, nullify or severely damaged traditional publishers which yeah. you know it's another weird thing is i feel like they're villainized like publishers are very villainized and i'm sure they do a lot of things and people could film me on all day probably but like at the end of the day they do give us the books we they do but i mean you gotta i mean we do understand like uh richard swan who i talked to about justice of kings yeah he hates that they made him change the name of his book like he hates it he did and he didn't yeah. want, he like Justice of the kings he, he, he liked the old title better. They came back with Justice Kings and he's like, he knows he's like, he's like, Alan, I know they're going to, they're going to keep that theme. So they like that symmetry. They're going to, the next one's going to be justice of something else. And the following one's going to be justice of something else. And so he's just dreading, he's dreading getting. So we joke, I'm like, you know, Richard, the next one's going to be Kings of justice. And then the third one's going to be justice of justices. And he's like, <laughs> like he's like, I will jump out the window. I will jump. I, He's so dreading to get the second, uh, uh, but at the same time, they're the ones who gave him the contract. They're pushing the button. He's really appreciative, but that's, I mean, that is the trade-off. Hey man, my employer, uh, my employer does some things I really like and some things I don't. Uh, exactly. But we don't, we don't think of it like that because this is art. And it is different. It is, I, well, it is different too. Yeah. I mean, and, and I wish that. But it is, it's also similar. It's also similar. It is similar in some ways. That it has policies that we don't we don't agree with, you know? And this is where self-pub in Kickstart, whatever, uh, does shine, right? And and so I think, like, self-pub is a perfectly viable option if that's what you want to do because you want that creative control and because you, you know, you, you don't want to have to sacrifice some things that traditional publishing might not um, think exactly, might not, you know, think is mainstream enough to sell well or whatever. I don't think self-publishing should be a rush to market because I don't really want to wait. So I'm going to put something out that isn't ready. You know what I mean? Like I think self pub because the options there, the temptation to just like, this isn't ready, but I've been working on it. I got to go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Like, I think that is where we have the problem as opposed to people, you know, uh, making it as good as it, as it good as it can be. How did we get away from Emperor's Blades again? I the keep dodging that, it, dude. The book that will not be talked about. We're going to have a live on it. We can talk about Emperor's Blade and the fact that... Oh my gosh, <laughs> if I just keep derailing you. Uh, no, we, we have not convinced Alan to do it. I mean, I think we're convinced that he sold on the idea. It's just time. Yeah, I'm going to do it, but it'll probably be during the summer. Um, and, and then he'll so probably leave it is, it is me, Jimmy, Phil. and uh, Philip Chase. And oh, Hillary. and Hillary. Sorry, and I thought I said one, Hillary. Yeah. I meant I thought I said Hillary, but I said me. So I meant Hillary. Jimmy. How narcissistic of you? Okay, listen. Emperor's Blades by Brian Staveley. First off, Brian Staveley is a cool dude. I didn't like the book, um, but this time I, I don't necessarily want to talk about Emperor's Blades, Alan. But I want to talk to you about something bigger, and it's been on my mind for a bit. And this well, is where I, I think. No, not even that. Uh, it, it, it's even it's even cooler than that, in my opinion, because I think this can be very constructive, and I hope the chat will chime in. Um, what do you think are the pros and the cons of read-alongs? Okay, so I think the pros. Um, I I really like read-alongs because, um, so I so the way my brain works, I think of it like when you're when uh, everyone is going on a trip. And when like, so when a, a bunch of people, for example, I'm going to have this very thing happen um, when we go to, we're going to Bush Gardens with my kids, my students, mm -hmm. um, we're all going to go to Bush Gardens. I always go to Bush Gardens, but this year it's going to be a bunch of uh, kids going to Bush Gardens because it's going to be all the groups instead of just my group. If we're all doing that, it's, it is so much more fun. 
if we're all together doing the same thing rather than, okay, everybody just go do what you want to do and we'll meet back up here. That is, that is. Yeah, I'd rather do that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But for me, it is more fun for this to be a shared experience. So I really like the read alongs because one, I like structure mostly because I'm one of the few people, Philip, Philip is the other one. It's me and Philip are the only people who are not like, you know, we hate TBRs. I think me and Philip are the only people who have not yet said, you know what? I just found out I'm a mood reader. I'm like, like, that's the default. Like, you don't have to tell me you're a mood reader. Everyone's a mood reader. I, <laughs> I crave the structure of a TBR. I like the structure because if I don't have a TBR, I'm never going to read it. Like, I'm never going to read it if it's not on my freaking list. I'm just not. So I like the TBR because it sticks to it. And so having something that I have to read every month, it will. it is how I'm going to read series that I'm not, I wouldn't read like, or that I would just put off for, for freaking ever. So I, and then at the end of the month, everyone comes together and we all talk about it. And because these collabs are the fun part, yes, without, they are. without that experience, you know, you can't have the collabs at the end. Uh, you, you just have, so your problem is not read along one book. Your problem is, is like the, is, is are you talking about just like series? Read -along? Oh, I, yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't really even stated anything yet because okay. I, I just wanted to hear what you think so are I, what's, I what's like cool them. about read-alongs and what's not because read-alongs in my like they're the biggest thing and di and they mean different things to different people that that's another thing i want to get into this is this is a big topic so i'm gonna try to like approach it you know in sections but i just want to hear like what you think's good about it and what you right. don't like about so it. so what's good about it is it's shared experience we're all doing the same thing so we all have the same point of reference Everyone feels like they belong. It's a very, it's a very like welcoming and, and like, usually it's a very welcoming and just like fun place to be where you're all talking about the same book at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not because it's brand new yes, or that it's been overhyped because I don't like that. I don't like when we're all talking about it because it just came out or it's the next freaking Stormlight book, in which case I'm going to freaking tune out from BookTube for the last six months of the year so that I can stop hearing about Stormlight. Which that year of Sanderson going to be rough for you, man. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm, so sick. I'm just so tired of hearing about it. Like, like and back in October, everyone was talking about Dune. And then a month later, it's wisdom of crowds all over the place. And ugh, it's just like, eh, like, ugh. So I don't like that, which is weird because it's it's super hypocritical because I'm, I like the same thing, but like it's the reason for it, like is what makes it fun. Um, and so I like that. And I like I also like. I don't really know why I like the idea of consistency of just doing something. Every, it's like a shared journey. It's like it's our own little fellowship. It's a lesson plan. I mean, I hate lesson plans, but uh, <laughs> it, 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 it is. It's just it's just a journey that we're all taking together. It's like a road trip because I really yeah. like road trips. I like that. The I bad like that. thing is the bad thing is that read-alongs become frustrating toward the end as people drop out. Because the thing is, here's what frustrates me about read-alongs. Yes. When my friends DNF the freaking books that we're reading, because I would not I have distorted views of loyalty. I just do. And I and and that's a it's a problem with me. I understand it, but I like I would never DNF a book that I had agreed to read for a read along with a friend. I just wouldn't. I would suffer through it. I would hate it. I would message him all the time being like, I hate you. I hate this book. Oh my gosh, we're not friends anymore. But that would get me through it because I agreed to do it. But right. when all my friends start DNFing the freaking books, I'm just like, and then by the end, by the time we're done, like when we're on the last book and no one freaking is reading it, um, then it's like you and three people. That's the bad part because people don't want, because everyone's a bloody mood reader. And then I'm like, why does everybody have commitment problems? This is the problem with America. No, like this is, this is why everyone's divorced. Everyone has commitment problems because they won't freaking read one book every month. How hard is that? <laughs> Most of y'all read 12 books a month. Slot that one in there. So, so, and I'm being hyperbolic. Please, no one. No, no, me. I get it. Alan, it's, Alan, it's, yours is all other booktubers confirmed. So, <laughs> so you're more the longevity of it and sticking with the plan. So yours is more of the month over month more so. And, and that's the interesting thing about your read alongs, I think is that it's series. It's a, you know, um, or like Mike's book reviews does like big channel read alongs. Right. Um, 
I have always done standalones. Like I did a very loose 11, 22, 63. And then I'm of course doing the, a song of ice and fire read along. It's more of a reread for like 90% of yeah. the people, 99% of the people, the few f- new, new readers. I love that. It's so cool. But, um, that it's more of a reread. I actually like read alongs more when it is a reread because there's no pressure of, am I caught up to everyone? And this kind of brings me to, the big point of contention. And Justin actually said something. He said, I don't like relongs because I'm slow AF. And that is a, a thing. I, I actually, uh, <laughs> Baron was in uh, my discord and I said, he said, are we finally going to do a read along? I can't remember what book it was for. Maybe Swan song, I think, or it, I can't remember which one it was, but he was like, I was like, uh, we did do one. We did one for 11, 22, 63. It was like unofficial, like five people were reading it once. And he's like, yeah, you finished it in four days. And I was like, well, yeah, I did. It, no, it was Empire of Silence. I'm sorry. It was Empire of Silence. I said, well, I really liked it. So I did, you know, I just kept reading it and kept reading it. And they're like, no, you're like, you, you, that's not the point. Like, you're supposed to slow down and read like a couple pages a day. So I didn't, I didn't know that. I've always taken read alongs and this is how I've always done it. And how I kind of like them is just like, we're reading this book in a month. And at the end of the month, we'll all come together and talk about it. That's how a song of ice and fire has been very loose. Um, so I, my question to you, Alan, is, do you think read alongs are better if they're more structured like week by week, maybe? So I know people that do read alongs that way Um, for like my friends, Angela and Ina are reading through Malazan and -hmm. they do a chapter uh, a week or a chapter, you know, chapter Malazan chapter long, they commit to staying on the same page. And when Katrina and Angela read long price quartet, they agreed to read to a certain place every day and then they would read their other book. Um, So I can see the advantage of that because also I don't like doing, I don't like doing a buddy read. And then like, like, well, like what's about to happen, Jimmy, like what's about to happen. We're going to read God is not willing together, but really you're going to be done with God is not willing by Tuesday. And I won't even be done with a book that I've started that I'm reading currently. And so then we'll meet at the end and talk about it, which is fine. Uh, That doesn't bother me. Um, But yeah, I, yeah, I like to talk about it at the at the end of at the end of the um, at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. But like you said, I think what I like is I just like having a read along on my channel because it also creates like a sense of like a sense of community. Like we're all everybody in the oh, you have the be- yeah, yeah, doing the same thing. I like that more. I think you're absolutely right. I like that more than like single book read alongs. Like I don't mm-hmm. do those as much. And then when I read them, I tend to read mine toward the end of the month and everyone else usually reads them at the beginning of the month. So everyone's in the chat and everything. And I actually like, I look at it, but I don't say super active in it because again, people spoil stuff. And I'm just like, I haven't read this book yet. With, with shadow campaigns, I'll be in there active the whole time because I've read it. Uh, I, you know, I read it five years ago, the series, and I've been wanting to do a reread, which is why I'm kind of happy that it won. Um, so, so Yeah. I think a structure it might it might work that way, but I don't like reading two books at once. I'll have an audio running that, and I'll have something reading, but I same. am not someone who likes reading two different books at one time. They have to be vastly different usually for me to do that. Like Sun Eater and Dresden are pretty easy to do together. Realm of the Otherlings and Dark Tower were a good couple, which is strange, but it just was because they were so different. And- yeah. And when you have a larger group, like with like five or like like maybe a handful of people. You can do the like spread it into more structured, spread it into we're going to read this much this week, this much this week. But when you do like a channel wide, like a discord wide one, people aren't going to listen to that. They're going to ignore it. They're going to be like, oh, it got good. So I kept going. I finished it. Sorry. Oh, well, by the way, I'm already in the third <laughs> book right now. Like they're already going to do that with the unstructured one. Well, I, so I guess my thought is, is like I, and I actually told uh, uh, my patrons, I said, OK. Uh, when we do Swan Song, I will actually I'm going to read it. So I'm going to read a little bit every day for 30 what days. Is. What is Swan Song? Uh, by Richard McCammon. I, I, I'm probably saying his last name. Wrong. I can't remember his last name, but uh, it's essentially everyone says it's the stand written. It's it's like the stand. And a lot of people think it's better, which is interesting. Post apocalyptic. If Russia and U.S. had come to blows nuclear and it's po- it's as if like the nuclear fault in America and people are left over. And apparently it leans into horror, um, but it's supposed to be very much like the stand. Yes, there it is. Uh, Silver Reb said Robert McCammon. Yeah, 
and he also wrote Boy's Life, oh, which a movie like it was a movie too. Oh, it probably was. But uh, the book I think was written in maybe the eighties. I can't remember. But I'm gonna be. Uh, I, it's actually one of my most anticipated reads because I love post apocalyptic America. It's like one nice. of my favorite settings. Yeah, it was the eighties. Look at that. I've oh yeah, Bar Baron. I was just talking about uh, our read along, and I was talking about the approach to read along. How have I never heard of this book? I was alive. Dude, read it with me. Nineteen eighty seven. Read it with me in September. I think in September. Okay, that's a hard maybe. At just, least, just pledge to it and then don't September. do it when it comes around. That's just at easy. least it's if I pledge to it, I will have to when it comes around. That's why I'm giving you a hard maybe. That so, loyalty. I, I know. Like if I said I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I think it's um, going to be a fun break from fantasy, and it it's a big book though. By the way, big, 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 big book. It's stand levels, right? So, but I love the stand, and if someone tells me that this is better than the stand, I'm in. So, Jimmy, we were just talking about how I know, people tell but you it's that. not fantasy. I want to you to report me in September, Jimmy, if you think it's better than the stand. the stand. Do you like the stand? Well, it depends. Do you oh, love the I stand? Oh, I love the stand. Okay, I'm, like the, I'm like one of a hundred people that like the ending. I, yeah. I, 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 I love the stand also. I, I am love also a huge, a huge fan of the stand. Love that book. Um, but uh, getting back to it, you know, I said, I, I kind of said, 928 okay. pages. <laughs> I told you it was long, dude. I should have just never told you the count. And you shouldn't have because I did. I was not. I was like, oh, it's not fantasy. Cool. Three hundred. You're pages. out. The three hundred pages. Nice. You're out. Nine hundred. Jimmy. How dare. No, but think how good it is because to get published a nine hundred page book published that isn't fantasy is not pretty in the impressive. 80s, though. Yeah, like, right. that was more common in the you're 80s. Right. They were just trying to find anybody to write back then. Yeah. Any will anybody copy the stand, please? Dude, Kickstarter is going to change that. <laughs> Haven't you heard? <laughs> All publishers have gone only Kickstarter now. Like, if your project does not get Penguin Random House went bank publisher. belly up last night. Do what? I'm just being oh, I thought you were serious. I'm no, I'm being an ass. Uh, <laughs> um, but the thing about the read alongs that I have to say is true is if you do it, let's say you did week by week, it would be easier to have all oh, snap. Is this the new one? Yep, this is Tiberius Claudius Nero Germanicus. Oh, Tiberius. This is Alan's new cat. Got well, exactly, it's actually Claudius, but his first name's Tiberius. Oh. <laughs> Claudius, but okay. Yeah. Claudius is adorable. Yeah, it's named after the Emperor Claudius, whose full name was Emperor uh, Tiberius Claudius Nero Germanicus. Well, he looks sleepy. That's because he, he like fell out of his bed. Like, oh. I just went and picked him up. Hey. He's so cute. Hey. Oh, my goodness. He's so tiny. Oh, sorry. Continue. Think about read along week by week. Okay, so if you were to do this week by week, I think it might. I was a big fan of just do it in a month, read it when you can, we'll get it in the end. But I think that it is maybe better to do week by week breakdowns because you avoid everyone getting ahead and going, oh, guys, don't worry. This book sucks. Don't worry. It's, it's going to suck. do it anyway. That's what I'm worried about. Well, what if, what if, what if they're not allowed to? What if you say, hey, you're out of the chat if you I do it? Just. Like, rules alan rules are very important you know this yes when i have when i have some form of like uh, leverage over people to to like you have admin in your discord just ban them ban people from the whole discord if they yeah. go ahead we're that's not messing a, around that punishment does not fit the crime like that's <laughs> the thing like that's too harsh like you went ahead in the read-along ban listen it's a slippery I, slope i'm just saying i mean it is you, <laughs> you know what you are right you're, you are right about uh, about that. Um, that's actually a good idea. Currently, if I don't do that, I'm going to actually think about that. What, what, what if you, but here's the thing. What if you have one channel and you say the only things that can be posted in this channel are chapters one through 10? So even if they read ahead, they are not allowed to post it. You don't even open up the other channels. Oh, don't open up the other channels. Don't open up the other channels. And that's that way, and, and everyone just stay on schedule. Just stay on schedule. You're going to avoid spoilers. You're going to avoid, uh, you know, the big, and another thing, if everyone does dislike something or someone does, di oh, chapter six, I hated the part where the dude sat on a cat or something, you know, it's like, okay, but then you can have conversation around that negative point and someone might be able to paint a different light. And then we have a nuanced perspective going into the read along because you're right. I, with these read alongs, it's either I feel like the only guy in the room that didn't like it or everyone's dog pound and I'm part of the dog pile. It doesn't feel great either well, way. What I have now, if I don't switch it, I'm really going to think on these ideas. They're good. What I have now is I have literally uh, like uh, the dumpster. I'm going to have a dumpster fire channel where if you don't like it, you can go in that channel and you can witch and moan all you want. But then <laughs> the people who are reading it in like the actual like like chapter chats, 
don't have to see all of it and they never have to click on it if they yeah. don't want to hear people dumping on it. Because I think, I think if I had had that, I would have enjoyed Emperor's Blades more. Now, I think the first 20 pages of it, the first 20 chapters of Emperor, Emperor's Blades are not good. I don't think they're good at all. Yeah. Then I think it starts to get, get a little better. But this book, part of the book's problem is it starts way too early. Like, 30 chapters too early. That yeah. book should not have started to like close to chapter 40. And there's only 50, 50 chapters in the book. I, there's no urgency. Nothing happens. And not <laughs> in the not in the Daniel Abraham, it's setting up something way. Like there was, it didn't, we'll talk about this more in the collab, but like it started way, way before it should have. But I thought the end, I thought the last 10 chapters were really good. I was actually, I was actually like, I was kind of out at yeah. that point. Yeah, out. yeah. Well, did you read them? Did you read it? Yeah. No, I read it. Like, like with, like physically. Yeah, I did physically. I and then I did oh, audio for the. For well, no, I did. I did audio the second half. So I read physically oh, the first okay. half. Audio and the audio did help because Simon Vance is a G. Simon Vance is amazing. I love Simon Vance. Also, Baron says I like to do the red mouths in like a month. Is worried about people. No, actually, I, I'm actually saying I don't like read alongs. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, do, I don't like them because I just feel like unless if you do structure it week by week and slow it down, like I'm going to try this with Swan Song to read slowly. And then that'll tell if I ever do a read along again, because I just unless if it's a reread, I like rereads read alongs. It's great. You know, I, might, on the same plan I might try that, Jimmy, be like, it was like, OK, guys, we're going to try. A, we're going to try a, a different thing. And then people are going to be like, but I want to read the whole thing. And, it's like, and so you can. And then when we get to that, when that section comes, when I create a thread for that, you can talk about it. Here's what they're really going to do. They're going to go they're into going another to talk channel. about it in a different channel. Yeah, hey, you're right. That's what they're going to do. They're going to go right. into the, they're going to go into the main general chat and they're going to talk about it. Yeah, but it. there's also a lot of people who might not check that. So I don't, I don't know. I guess my my the whole thing about this was I want to hear pros and cons of what you think a read along is and how is the best run it. And then well that that's really the second part is like what's the ideal read along situation socially on the online. I I don't know what it is. I think the idea is if you if you commit to reading the read along, freaking read the books. It's not that hard. Like if you read twelve books a month and you can't slot one read along book in every month, like stop. Like stop. I get it if you read like three a month. Like that's hard for me. Um, mm -hmm. But people with their their commitment issues, it's uh it's so it's so sad to get to the end of a series and like only three people are still reading it, which I get. Um, but that's worse if it's like really long. But if it's like a trilogy, like come on, guys, like it's or a, a four book series, like four books, like y'all can y'all can survive. There's also people who can update like every chapter they read. And I think it's really cool. I can't do that. Or I start like feeling as if it's like, it's breaking my flow. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, I take notes when I read, um, depending on points, yeah. when I'm exhausted. I don't, I've been really bad about uh, writing notes. Recently. If I don't take notes, I don't review it. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. So I, I'm taking notes. Just, I wish I was taking better notes. Um, yeah. like I usually do. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't stop every chapter and talk about it either. I really just, I actually like when people do it. I, I actually love when people do it because I every like, Oh yeah, that's cool. Like, like hearing people's experience as they go is amazing. It's just something I'm not, I suck at. I suck at it. Yeah. I am. Um, I just mostly like, will post like, Oh, this thing was cool. Or like, Oh man, this chapter, good chapter. But mostly I try to save, I try to save most of my thoughts for the live show because if I didn't, um, because I don't, why are you tuning in the live show? I already told you everything I thought. Yeah, X Factor is one of the people who actually really enjoyed it. And, you know, everyone's in the freaking chat, like, crapping on it. And I can understand, like, if you really enjoyed the book and you're just watching, because that bothers me. Like, I am pretty, like, my identity isn't wrapped up in the books that I like. But when I hear a bunch of people keep, like, just continuing to trash the stuff that I like, like, repeatedly, like, over a course of several days. And I'm like, guys, I know. I know you don't like it. I understand. Like when all of my friends go out of my way, out of the way to tell me how much they hated Trader's Blade. It's like, I get it, guys. Like, I know you hated Trader's Blade. Being on the internet this week as a uh, Germ fan has been rough. I never even thought about like how everyone's like, well, Sanderson wrote four books in his time off. And uh, oh, that's even that's extra. That's and extra. Still hasn't finished. Hasn't finished Winds of Winter. The hell storm that came after his blog post this week. I'm just like, what was his blog? What was his blog post about? I, I missed this whole Germ thing. All of it. In fact, hold on, because it looks like you're about to go on a, on a thing. I'm going to refill my drink. 
and I might use the body. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll get caught up on chat here. Uh, my wife says, I stop and talk to you about every Robin Hobb chapter. My wife just finished Assassin, uh, a royal assassin, as did my best friend. Uh, and they both were mortified. Uh, once they finish Assassin's Quest, I'm going to bring my best friend. He was actually the best man at my wedding. Uh, and my wife on, and I'm going to do a live show talking about Farseer because I love the idea of talking more Robin Hobb, even though I'm done with it. Justin says, I like the idea of a scheduled read along, but I don't think the majority would stick to it for a large community. Yeah, that's the hard thing, Justin, is like especially because um, structuring it is another uh, time sink, right? And in, in trying to structure it out. But I'm going to try this with Song Song. I'm actually going to I'm only going to read like maybe 20 pages a day or however. I think I would have to do like 30 to finish the book by the end of the month. But I'm going to try to break it up and read it alongside of everything else I'm reading and just see how it goes. And maybe it'll make the um, the experience a lot better. Who knows? Oh, let me clarify also it's not sorry it's not actually the community at large that like i don't mind like if people like in the community that's fine it's when my friends don't stick with it you know what i mean like the people that i talk to like on the regular who are like yeah we're gonna do your read-along and then you know like like the people in in my discord like who i'm close to it's when they abandon it that i'm like like, come on, guys. Like, like it's not just like we're in some random, like we agreed to do some read along in the, in, you know, on, on the, just for the halibut. Like you guys want to do a read along. Like it's not, it's not fun for me. If no, none of my, like my friends, I love the people in my discord, but like, if no one I'm close to is reading it, I'm just like, like guys, really? Like I'm the only one who can't abandon it. Y'all realize that. So you are looking at a man who cannot <laughs> jump off the ship and you're like, see ya. And well, into the water. But also to be fair though, I mean, let's uh, unhuman throne trilogy was a bust, right? Well, it, it and was. you're off the hook. It, you're off the hook. Yeah, it was, so, it, was, it was a bust and we voted to stop it and that's fine. And, and that's, that's a good, that's a new precedence though. And that's good. I actually think that's good because I'm someone who generally won't, I don't DNF a lot of books. I will. I think yeah. it's actually healthy to DNF, DNF books. Money. I think it's probably a good thing. I don't do it often and but i will dnf a series absolutely will like no problems with that there's too many good things out there that i want to get to um hey arian arian sun says it's a story graph thing stone are you talking about the live oh, stream we were idea? gonna set up a story graph you and i yeah like, I, 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 let's like, do it on the next chatting with nuts that's what we said last time we didn't do it shit did we <laughs> no it was said two times ago actually it's two chatting with nuts. why are you burying us dude don't they don't know <laughs> They don't know. Yeah, they all run together. They don't know, they all, dude. They all run together. <laughs> like, I like, I get it. Like, I get people are frustrated. Like, you know, if I was still waiting, like, I waited for a long time before I was just like, eh, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll read them again when the when the last one I have news of the last one coming out. Um, but, and you know, I understand people need to vent their frustration. But when people like go on his like personal Twitter and crap, like when people, oh, yeah, yeah. like when people tag him in their in their their you know vitriol, like. Like, why are you that way as a person? Even even less, even more petty than that, actually. What I, what I love is the people who are still sub to a Song of Ice and Fire subreddit and then will comment and be like, I gave up on these books in 2016. And why I, are you still belonging? I don't even care. If it came out tomorrow, I wouldn't read it. And I'm like, why are Liar. you still sub to this? Then get off the subreddit. Yeah, I'm not obsessed with this anymore. I was like, and then you like you can like see where there's, uh, it's like a hundred different sub Game of Thrones. Uh, and they post on it every day. And you're just like, it's okay to be hurt. <laughs> it's okay to be upset. Like you don't, again, you don't have to hate everything or love it to death. Only one way or the other. Um, like I, it I work on Twitter. Everyone's I, mad on Twitter. I'll actually bring up George's blog in a second, but I want to take this question because we've actually been asked this from somebody else earlier. I'm sorry. I missed it, but it says, what are your thoughts on live reading sprints? I, so what, is, what are they? I, I see people doing them. I've, I've never checked. Well, live reading sprints are when you go, um, you go on live, like a, like a, like this, like StreamYard, okay. and you do it by yourself. Like I've done some with my patrons before um, me and Christina. Um, and, but usually it's on your channel and there's like, you know, people get there. And so people come and they go on the live and you talk for a little bit and then you say, okay, um, we're going to read until, you know, uh, top of the hour. And so then, the people on camera, they, they, everyone mutes the thing and everyone reads. And then at the top of the hour, you come back and then everyone in the chat talks about what you read, how far you got. It's a kind of a way of accountability to, you know, to force you to read at that time. So it, it's used, it's used as a kind of like everybody's reading at the same time so that 
Because sometimes, like sometimes, if I'm not, if I wasn't in a reading sprint, I'm gonna play video games. But if I'm in a reading sprint, like I'm on camera, I can't have. So it's like a read. time to come together. We all agree. We're read together read and talk time. about what you read. Like, but is it dead silent when you're reading? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I. I mean, you can put on, I mean, if you're watching one, you can put on music or like you can put on whatever music's in your house. I can't hear it. So it's, it's, it's as if you are reading, but there are other people reading with you. I mean, it is, it is a little strange watching people silently read, like watching people read is a weird thing. I feel like I'd be self-conscious about my reading. Uh, Christina is. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'll go. <laughs> or, or, or. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that's what those are. I, wish i i used to do them and i haven't done them in forever because they take a long time because you read and then you talk and then is everyone read. reading the same book no you read whatever you want you say that's part of what you say when people come the first time like what's everyone reading what's everyone reading tonight and then everyone like you know when i do my page i'm like hey guys what are you reading um i'm reading this christina's reading um mansfield park and then uh, everyone says, I'm reading this. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm reading this. What's that about? You know, and you just, it's just a way to kind of, um, you know, I use it to connect with the patrons. And then we read and then we say, okay. And, you know, RJ's like, I just read, you know, 35 pages of, of Touch of Light. I'm like, dang, what part are you at? That kind of thing. Hmm. And then, so it's just, yeah, you just come together and read whatever. And then you talk about it. It's just like a, it's just like a, like a meetup at a coffee shop where you all hang out and do the same thing. And no, I, I actually kind of like this idea. I do too. It just takes a lot of time, which is why I don't do it. Yeah, um, well, yeah, that's definitely a lot of time. It, I will say this: like, I think if people are coming together and to read and to feel like connected to somebody, even in the same room, I get that because, like, I actually don't play a lot of my PC. I, I have a gaming PC that's unplugged because I don't like shutting myself away in my office. I have to shut the door because the cats, and then I'm like away from my wife. She doesn't care, but like, I like being in the same room with her, even if we're not talking. I just like being close. I guess. That is why it would be better for me because i would love i love filming at my desk because i have a back support and i have like something to put stuff down on instead of the yeah. no back thing that i sit on in my office but i don't want to move my desk to the office because then everything if i'm doing something on the computer i will have to be locked away away from my wife i like being out here in the living room because my wife is here and you know even though we're not doing the same thing at least i'm in the same room as opposed yeah. to having to go back there and editing a video i'd have to go back there out of the yeah i get it so I, I used to have my desk I, uh, when I used to work from home overnights. I used to put my desk in the living room. So like Kelsey would be watching TV and I'd be yeah. working, you know, just to be next door. Um, does anyone ever like if it's dead silence, anyone ever like cut cheeks or anything? Like is it ever like, oh, everyone ever the mics on mute. Oh, I'm always told to oh, like no. I'll, I'll make faces or do weird stuff because the silence is like silence disturbs me. So um, every now and then I'll pop on and go, bah, and people like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> i love it um, so yeah i like them they just take a lot of time and the live ones that are done like on the mainstream channels instead of on like patreon uh, people especially like six people like when it's just me and christina i will end up talking for like 20 minutes before we reread again and which is fine again just trying to connect with the patrons but uh but when there's like six people in a reading sprint they'll talk like i've watched i've watched the, like what jake's talking about i've watched them talk for like 45 minutes and i'm like how's this a reading sprint like when are y'all gonna read again and it's fine like that's that's fun too i might cool. do this uh, maybe this is something i could do with my patrons I'll have to ask 100%, if interested. Uh, patrons patrons like it my patrons always came i always had at least like you know 18 20 something patrons wanted, wanted to do it um what do you do it like weekly i weekly is too I, I used to try to do it weekly oh, heck, I, I am so and I feel so bad like this, like this is part of the, pre like we all have the pressure of booktube, right? Like the pressure, we don't mean to, but Jimmy, you like me, I know you feel the pressure. I know you feel it to, Sometimes. to, to put crap out. Um, and you know, especially patrons, like, you know, they definitely there. Yeah. The panel. And I feel bad that I've been so bleeding busy that I just don't have the bandwidth. Well, the dude, extra. I, I, I mean that, that that I think it's a natural thing, but you you should feel proud. I think because watching you grow has been a a complete um, you know, it's it's a um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a motivator, right? Like watching how you cultivate things. And I think if you were messing up, I think you have the kind of rapport with your audience that they'd let you know. I hope so. I, it's just I just feel so bad, and no. uh, and I am proud. Like I like I, I'm so happy. So many people support. 
it's just like I all it I always feel like it's teetering. Like any minute, all of it's gonna collapse. Everyone's gonna unsubscribe. No, I'm not gonna have any patrons. Now you are gonna have you know, you're gonna have dips. Yeah, you know. this My, is this, this is an unreal. I know it's unrealistic here, but it's just pressure, right. like yeah, I'm gonna be abandoned, like with nothing but this this 10 year old Yeti microphone. And I'm going to be talking in the woods, making podcasts with the squirrels. You'll always have me. I'll do a podcast with you nice. tomorrow. Jimmy, today we're going to talk about poison sumac. Sumac's bad, bro. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, Civil Reb says, Jimmy, when are you going to convert Alan to Berserk? Never. Alan would hate. He told me actually before we started that I wouldn't like Berserk. I was telling Alan how much I love Berserk. And I said, it's unfortunate because I could never recommend it to you. Um, Berserk is a very uh, personal thing. You just, I let, I well, you gotta, I just let people violent? come to it. Is it just uh, violent? Sure, that and a lot of other things. It's more that. than that, though. That that's one thing I, I will say. I don't necessarily ever recommend it to people, but I do always defend the fact that I think a lot of the things that happen in Berserk are very intense things to talk about, very hard things to talk about. But I think for some people, very necessary conversations, and I think it, it helps a lot of people feel seen. Uh, while also being one of the most difficult, if it, it's the most difficult thing I've ever read. Really? Not, not challenge wise. I mean, my heart. Um, and, really? and yeah, yeah, dude. What the crap? It's not a, uh, I don't read it and go, ah, oh, I'm just going to pop a couple pages of berserk. Here. It's never that it's like, I, 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 I have an existential crisis after I finish a chapter and I'm like, do I, am I liking this? <laughs> is this? Why am I doing this? Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it's pretty intense. So, <clears throat> and I don't read, I don't read a ton of, um, I don't read any manga. In fact, the manga I'm reading right now is 20th century boys because there's no anime. If there's an anime, I'd be watching the anime. Um, there's a new anime that uh, Christian told me about. It sounded kind of good. I think it's it called. It's something about Kings. Let me look. Uh, uh, it's a new, it's, it's a new anime ranking of Kings. Ranking of Kings. Yeah, supposedly. Can I play this or will I get taken down? We'll definitely get taken down. Don't. Okay, don't no, all right. I won't. I was going to share my screen. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, I, um. While you do <laughs> that, that I'm face kid. It, apparently, uh, the animation's like a kid. It looks like a kid show, and I guess it's super graphic. Uh, and really? that's kind of the the interesting job. I, like kind of like the meshing of those two things is yeah. really interesting art style. It's a art decision that people like, but I've heard that it's crazy. Like I've heard it's just absolute crazy. Wild. I'm looking at this right now. How long is the anime? Monica, oh, uh, I know we have gotten some people through the pandemic, but I'll, uh, you guys got me through the pandemic. <laughs> to <right>. be honest. <laughs> I feel like this is probably a good time to uh, share George's blog. Post. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Tell, tell me about that blog post. Okay. Uh, can everyone see this? This I can show you. So uh, this is what George said and, and people I, I'm positive on this. I know a lot of people are mad about this, but I'm actually positive on it and I'll explain why at the end. So hold your tomatoes. Uh, I look around and I don't know where 2021 went. I blinked and it was gone. Not a year that I'm going to mourn much any more than 2020. A global pandemic, so many deaths, including friends of mine, as well as celebrities of all sorts, po uh, politics grown increasingly toxic, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I am not complaining. I like wor working, writing, writing, editing, producing. There's nothing I like better than storytelling. I know, I know for many of you out there, only one of those projects matter. Um, I am sorry for you. They all matter to me. And this is part of the thing that a lot of people are upset about. And what I am going to do is say that I think it's totally reasonable to be upset about this because in 2016, he said he would never work on another production again. He wouldn't even, he's cutting down all of his wild cards editing to finish wins. Um, so he is inconsistent with his messaging. Um, I know I've changed a lot in six years, but I digress. Uh, I'm sorry for you. They all matter to me. Yes, of course. I'm still working on the winds of winter. I love how you always Catholic. The winds of winter. Uh, I, I've started, uh, stated that a hundred times in a hundred venues. Having to restate it endlessly is just wearisome. I believe it. I made a lot of progress on wins in 2020, which we knew hundreds of pages. Uh, less in 2021, but less is not none. And this is the part that everyone keeps. They're like, you know, it's over. Pack it up it's a wrap, you know, less is not none. That means you wrote two pages. Come on. We know he hasn't read. Two pages. Come on. Uh, 
Um, so he basically goes on to say that he's obviously writing wins, but he's also doing the second part of fire and blood because he feels like it's necessary. Uh, and he wants to write more Duncan egg novellas, um, tell the rest of the stories, which is very important by the way, for the song of ice and fire world. I know a lot of people maybe not care about that, but Duncan egg is going to tell us what happened at summer hall, which is a massive piece of the story. Um, and that, that's kind of the thing, right? Like this story has grown past the five novels or the five published novels. Um, is Fire and Blood a prequel? Fire and Blood is the uh, first part of all the Targaryen history. I'm actually reading it next month. I'm so excited. I'm, I've, I've read all of the bits. I've never read it page uh, cover to cover, and I've missed a couple things. Um, and then he's talking about the shows, which we know that House of the Dragon's coming. Uh, I'm very excited for that. They're also doing a Dunkin' Egg Live adaptation. Uh, and then there's some other ones. Um, um, Corliss Valerion show which i think is a very interesting choice i mean he's he's cool but it's just like an interesting choice that they made there's not Ten Thousand ships the nymeria series um like i said duncan egg with steve connor this one i'm most excited about because i love duncan egg which by the way we're reading a night of the seven kingdoms which is all the duncan egg this month and march 26 at 9 p.m eastern i will be joined by lana and alex to talk about duncan egg all three of those stories so um so yeah he has a lot of stuff coming there's an animated series of supposedly that's supposed to be coming out. Now, will all of these make it to pilot or, you know, to will all these be greenlit? No. Uh, House of the Dragon is, I think, Duncan Egg is probably a sure thing. Um, and I'm sure at least one of the others. But he's basically saying, I got a lot of stuff I'm working on and he really enjoys it. Um, the issue is, is he's working on things that people don't want him to work on. Uh, what is Night of the Cooters? Well, Alan... <sighs> Uh, you know, every man comes to a point in his no, life. What is it? What is he working on that has that title? Uh, let me let me look here. I believe, uh, and a night of the cooter should be finished this month. I believe this is something that he is adapting for another author. No, I'm wrong. Oh, wait, hold on. I don't want to Google it. Night of the Co Cooters, George R. R. Martin, who produced short film starring and directed by Vincent. Uh, a De Anorfrio from Triscope Studios, um, by Howard Worldrop. So these are um, some stories. I get. I don't know. How about that? I don't know. It's somebody else's uh, stories that he's going to help adapt. Why is it called that? Why not, Alan? <laughs> there are many reasons. Why Listen, not. my last name's nuts, so I don't have any room to talk about. These I mean, choices. <laughs> yeah, but like, you didn't choose that name. Like the author chose. Yes, I, yes, I did. <laughs> It's not my real last name. Oh, I knew that. You're right. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never <laughs> but my, my point is, is that he's working on things, but people want him to be working on wins. And he did. And I, you know, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be mad or say mean things or even uh, whatever. It's just as someone who reads that and says, oh, I might not get wins, but I'm going to get a lot of Westeros content. Cool. I'm I in. guess I'm in. Um, and this comes from someone who loves the books way more than the show. Uh, who wants the ending? I don't think I'm ever going to get it. I've kind of, I'm fine with that though. I'm not the person that really needs the neat, tidy ending. That's just not me. It's probably why I love dark tower to be honest. Like a lot of people have a problem with that. I didn't have any issues. Um, I hate stand, it. Yeah. The stand people think, you know, Stephen King, ah, Stephen King's ending suck. I'm fine with it. Like with Stephen King, I just like, I like Stephen King's books. I really like the movie Dreamcatcher. I don't like the book, but I really like the movie. Like, I watched the movie. I liked the movie when I was young. I yeah, really it. yeah. Like, I, I, I like Jason Lee and Timothy Oliphant and Damian Lewis. Um, I like I like the I like the movie a lot. Um, yeah. but you know, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, like it's my favorite series of all time. Uh, Song of Ice Fire is my favorite series of all time. So of course, I'd like to see it finished. It's but... you like it better than than Realm of the Underlings. Yes. Yes. By how much? Like by a lot? Um, it, it, it's hard to even compare, man. There's so much nostalgia. It, 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 like, it, there's nothing that's, you know, it is what it is. It's just not going to get, it's never going to get topped. At I, this point. That's good. That's good. I just don't think, maybe I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I also don't put like a ton of weight into that. Like, yeah. like some people might hear that and be like, well, why would I ever want to hear your thoughts on a book if it's never going to be your favorite? You know, yeah, that's, see, see, that's no, I get it. I get it. I get it completely. Cause I think, I think Discworld is that for me. And it's not that I think every Discworld book is the best book I've ever read. Mm -hmm. I just think that the series itself was so formative for me and it resonates so much. Like just the way I feel when I read a Discworld book is it, it like nothing else matches it. If you get sent to a, uh, a des uh, deserted island, you would take Discworld. Yeah, because it's not like I think every Discworld book 
is the best book ever written. But like the the City Watch books are there. I mean, I think I think I think they're always going to be my favorite series just because just because of 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 how it resonates with me and and the effect that Terry Pratchett had on my uh, just on the way I like process words and information and even talk, I still use phrases that I first saw in a, in a Terry Pratchett book um, in my classes in 2022 when I read a book back in 1996. Yeah. So um, yeah, Jimmy hates all the books confirmed. Confirmed. If it's not Germ, it sucks. Confirmed. Uh, yeah, Jake says that people were upset because of specific page number for Fire and Blood too and on specific wins a winner. Yeah. Probably being over pessimistic, thinking a lack of a number means like three pages. Yeah, I, I don't I don't agree with that. Um, but at the same time, uh, he, he's going to do whatever he's going to do. And if you put something out, I'll read it. And I, I guess I'm just OK with that. Like I have other stuff to be stressed about. And this is not one of those things that I stress about. Yeah. Um, and, and just also. I, I, I'm just kind of tired. So the jokes are tired, guys. You can make them. But I every time I see it, I, my eyes can't roll for uh, they roll so far back in my head. <laughs> I <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah, I am. Uh, I didn't realize how much I roll my eyes until this week with how much my every like everything my students tell me, I just roll my eyes like they tell me. And it's always they're talking about something that another kid did or another teacher did. And I just go, I just my eyes just like go back into my head, like all nothing but white, like I'm a demon because I'm just. Why does everybody say, why does everybody say stupid stuff? All the time? Like, and it's the same like, stupid stuff. It's because they heard it from somewhere else, and then they're parroting, especially children, like especially my teenagers. Like it's just like, like like Miss Walker. Like when something catches on on TikTok, I have to hear about it four times in the same day, and I'm like, guys, I've already heard it. Are you on TikTok? No. Why would I be on TikTok? I don't know. I I don't know how to use that. I just I I can't have another platform. I'm I'm with my YouTube people. Yeah. On my YouTube boomers, where you at? (laughs) I'm on YouTube. I keep I keep track of what's going on with people that are out of town on Facebook, and then I post some stuff on Instagram. I probably check Instagram the most, but even then, I can't. I can only be bothered to to promote you know one out of every four videos I put up because I'm like, Ugh, so much work to put this up here. What if I didn't? Like, what if I just didn't? <laughs> so I just don't. Um, yeah. Mostly, I use Instagram to rant about how the fact that freaking croutons break when you try to spear them with a freaking fork um or rant about the traffic on on i-75 i street. enjoy your your ranty story yeah that's 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 really what i use instagram for is just a yeah rant. i've never posted anything on instagram but i i, 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 I do like oh, we're uh, friends on instagram yes are we <laughs> i know i follow you i wouldn't blame you if you didn't follow me i wouldn't mind Dude, i follow jimmy nuts yeah my zero post oh yeah alan you said to remind you about the assassination game since we're talking about kids and rolling your eyes, I feel like this is probably going to be pretty strong uh, to wrap up the germ point though, folks, I'm just excited for more Westro stuff. I don't care if it comes in the way of show or books. I would prefer books. Okay. But it is what it is. So. Also for jokes being tired. And now, you know how I feel about wheel of time. It's just 15 page description of dresses. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's also our own faults. Cause we're so in, de- you know, we're embedded in this community and, and we talk and, you know, four and four, you know, there's a hundred people watching right now. I think what maybe 20 of them, 30 of them probably are regulars in a, in a discord community or something like that. You know, it's like the niche of the niche. So, so every year, except the last two because of COVID, I play a game right before spring break because the Ides of March is usually either right before spring break or it falls on spring break. And the Ides of March, if you don't know, is the 15th of uh, 15th of March is when Julius Caesar was murdered. Uh, fun fact, I will be in Italy with 30 of my students next Ides of March and they reenact the assassination of Caesar in the theater. Of can I go? Uh, you cannot, sadly. You cannot. You are not. What if I'm just you. there? You can't stop me. I, I literally can't. If you happen to be in Italy, I can't stop you. But, but uh, uh, I cannot take I cannot take non uh, whatever on my. But trip. if I met you there, I mean, then I, I mean I can't stop you from going to Italy, Jimmy. <laughs> I can literally I can't be like no. You, the school says that no one I know can be anywhere in Europe. Like, um, gonna... but so I will be I will be in Italy, um, and it's going to be awesome to see that. But every so I because I, I spend a, a semester lecturing on the life of Julius Caesar, and we always finish right before uh, spring break. And so last week we play a game called Caesars versus Senators. 
And so what happened is I cut from a sheet, I cut armband, white armbands uh, for all of my Latin two students, my second year. And the game starts and everyone uh, has to tie an armband and they ha while they are at school, their armband must stay on their arm and it must remain uncovered. So the object of the game is at the beginning, there are two, everyone with a white band is a cesarean. They are working with Julius Caesar to overthrow the Republic. There are two traitors within, uh, within the white banders who have white bands, but they are actually senators. They are part of the senatorial faction trying to preserve the Republic as it is. I secretly send, uh, and I play too, I play too. I secretly send uh, a, a remind to the two um, secret ones. And then slowly, everyone carries around a red marker. And the object is to mark their armband without being caught. So if you're coming up behind them and they turn around and they see you, like you can't, you have to stop. Assassination attempt failed. You have to wait till a later time to try to assassinate them again. But if like you're talking to somebody, like if I'm talking to you, Jimmy, and I got, um, you know, I got Alex coming up behind you with a marker. I've distracted you. Boom. He marks your arm. You're dead. Now you're part of the sen senatorial faction and you're trying to help us kill the rest of the Caesars. Okay. And so it starts very slow and then it starts building up and there are rules. No one runs because there's no reason to run. You can't get body in, in class unless it's at lunch um, because otherwise teachers witch and moan because their classes are being disrupted. Right. My room is always a safe zone, but before school, after school, during lunch, any time. And so it starts off very slow. Like the very first guy got got because his friend was one of the secret ones and the school was selling snow cones like out in the courtyard guys reaching for a snow cone <laughs> his just, boop, marks his armband and he's like you piece of trash that's messed up man i know and so as the week progresses more and more people starting to start to get got and it becomes a bloodbath like this sounds awesome dude and one kid today was like, Mr. Walker, what was the purpose of that game? I'm like, well, the purpose, one, is to do something fun before spring break. But two, we talk about these guys named Clodius Polcare and Titus Anius Milo, who literally commanded rival gangs in the <laughs> middle of Rome, where it was dangerous to even walk the streets because it was like gang war. Like these two gangs controlled all the streets. And if you were on the wrong side, like they would, they would they'd beat you to death. And I'm like, that is a microcosm of what you experience because there's ro this roving bands of assassins. They would get passes to leave their class and they would hide in the recesses of the hallway. One girl got got because another girl, we were in the middle of class and she goes, she's like, just walking around to the bathroom. I'm like, that's fine. And I said, is anyone here done with their test who is a senator? And this one girl raised her hand. I'm like, go camp out, go camp out the bathroom. And so she goes into the, she waits out, she goes into the bathroom and hides in the other stall. When the girl comes out of the stall, she comes up behind her, marked, because she was in the freaking bathroom. And, uh, and that girl came back in and she was, she was mad because they all get really mad. And then first of all, she dropped an F-bomb in front of me and I said, I'm sorry. And she's like, oh, I'm like, watch your mouth. Like, watch your mouth in my class. Thank you. Um, but they get really, really like worked up and to see the traps that they set for each other, like the distractions yesterday, because we had five left yesterday, there were five left. Um, there were four people hiding out near this girl's car, waiting for her to go to leave the, um, the, her seventh period to get to her car to go home. She climbed out the window of her seventh period class and got a friend to drive her home leaving them waiting for an hour, not knowing that she'd gotten someone to drive her home. <laughs> Dude, this is amazing. It was so much fun. And the thing is, I told them, I'm like, you're not going to get got ambushing me in the hallway. You're not. I'm too careful when I walk. I'm like, you're going to get me got because I'm going to be talking to someone and I'm not going to be paying attention. So yesterday they were trying to clean because one, one guy lunged for a girl and she dodged and his marker just <sighs> slung red ink onto the ground to where my admins were like, was there a fight? Like, did someone nosebleed? I'm like, no, it's a casualty of war. Sorry. So we were trying to, <laughs> they were trying to clean it up, but they were using this crap that was like going to make everybody like their, their brains rot. It was like this graffiti remover. And when it didn't work the first time and it was stinking up the hallways, they didn't stop. And so I went out there to be like, guys, 
like, what are we doing? Like, if you, if it's not working the first time and, you know, I've got my door, like my door, my hands op holding open the door because I got a class. And I'm like, guys, like, like clean, like stop using that. Like quit. It didn't work. It made it worse. Like leave the doors open, prop it open. And while I'm doing that, a kid in my class hopped up, marked my band, whispered something to me. Bodied. And I didn't even remember what, it, I didn't even, it took me a second to process that he said, killed you. And then <laughs> everyone watched me go, That's if epic, I, man. I'd survived four of the five days, and then it got me. And then as soon as I'm got, I declare myself military dictator, and I start changing the rules on them. So I send the message saying, there are now four secret assassins who have no identification at all who are allowed to mark the Caesareans who are left, because this is for the preservation of the Republic. We must crush the dirty rebels beneath our heels. And they're like, that's not fair. I'm like, oh, well, can you survive? <laughs> and so two survived through the day. So they get, they're going to get an award um, and stuff. But the kids love it. But they're so, there's so much anxiety that when they get got, the kids either respond with like rage. One girl was like, like bawling, like, because there's nowhere for that anxiety to go. And then when, yeah. when all of that's done, they're just like, <laughs> or, or son of a, like, <laughs> but it's, it was, it, it's a blast. And, you know, everyone is always asking them and me, my ones are like, what's the game you all are playing? I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's none your, like, mind your business. And then the admins, uh, they're, you know, I, I should tell them when I start. So they're not worried. Cause the first thing right. they think of is like, Oh, it's gangs. Cause we're always, everybody's worried about gangs. Um, but then they're like, Oh, Walker's playing that game again. But I don't want to tell them. I just like them being surprised when all of a sudden chaos reigns in the halls. So, Dude, I, that makes me wish I was in high school and I have never said that since graduating high school, but that's not, that makes me wish I had like friends. <laughs> it is, it is, it is so fun, but it is absolute madness like 12 kids lining the hall waiting for this girl to come out of her class it oh it was brilliant it was it was so fun so we just finished it today that's um awesome. and and you know that's also taking up all my time because they're always coming in and being like oh so-and-so got me but i was in this i was in this class and i'm like you know you can't mark them doing that you know you can't mark them while they're looking at you guys can y'all quit bothering me with this crap and just read the rules that i handed you Head Cannon says that sounds like such an amazing game. It almost makes me willing to take a Latin class. <laughs> it's their reward for sticking it out for two years. No, that's awesome, man. Like that's, I, I never had anything like that. And uh, yeah, like I said, it makes me wish I was young again. It's going to cool. be, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun stuff. I like to do some it's fun cool, things, man. but I don't yeah, want to much fun. Cause then they'll think that I'm fun. And I don't want them to think that. You have so much going on. Um, and dude, I do a lot of collabs. Like I always look at my schedule. Like I had to buy a calendar to put on the fridge. My wife did it because she's like, you need to keep these dates straight. And uh, then I look at how much you do. And I'm like, Alan just does the most. I, I hate it. Like, like but you I, don't, I, but I, I know what you mean. Cause I always say that I'm going to stop doing as many collabs, but they're the, they're the best. I know. And I had gotten to where I'd gotten them down to a reasonable level. And now they're at an unreasonable level again. And yeah. I'm just like, how do I even find a time to schedule all this stuff? That's why you and me and Sarah haven't. I'm glad we're moving Dresden till after book three, because at least I don't have to worry about that. I right think now. that's a good idea. And, yeah. and honestly, if we get to it and we've already read four, we'll just do like it, it can be whatever we want Word. it to be. I am thinking maybe when I finish Great Peril, I'll publish a video on my channel, like just saying my thoughts in a condensed fashion, too. Uh, cause I assume we'll do the talk on your channel. I feel like I should yeah. definitely be on oh, your 100%. channel because you've been on my channel so often. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm going to post a review of each individual one on mine just cause I like reviewing books. I just am so behind. Thanks mom. My mom said I'm still young. You are still young. I turned 40 in a week. You're what? 32, 31 turning 32 this year. Yeah. When's your birthday? November 21st. Oh, nice. Yes. November 21st. Jake says, I'm over here trying to do more collabs. Oh, Jake's, Jake's going to be in our Emperor's Blade one, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, when yeah. is that? Uh, I, isn't, I, it, I, isn't it this I, week? No, we, we hadn't scheduled it yet. 
No, I thought we did. No, I said, what's y'all's availability this week? And then you're like, I'm gone Wednesday through Sunday. And I'm like, I'm gone. Oh, yeah. No one responded. (laughs) Yeah. And then Sarah's like, well, Monday through Wednesday, I'm on call. And I'm like, and then Jake's like, I can do Tuesday. (laughs) And so I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Um, And then I want to do I want to do a black company uh, collab with Jake because Jake's the only one of my friends who has read. um, I I really want to read it. Um, I would be interested to see your thoughts. People, most people don't like it, um, but Jake likes likes the first three books. Why? Cool. Why not? Uh, because it's Old. it's not like really anything. No, it it like Jake says, it reads like a series of interconnected stories. Um, it's just written very strangely. Book two is way better. I know everyone says like when you read it, you'll be like, oh, that's where Erickson got this and that. It, and all. That is like the the thing that made me like really like Erickson when I first started reading him. Cause I've read, I'd read all 10 books of the black company three times by the time I picked up, um, gardens of the moon is the, the like nicknames that all the soldiers have based on some kind of characteristic or, or some kind of like ironic, like, you know, how captain kindly is not at all stuff like that. Yeah. That, that's directly out of the black company. And I, I know love that stuff. <laughs> it may not have been the first person to do it, but like, None of them use their real names. Like the main, the main analyst name is Croker, and and that's a joke because he's also the medic. So he's the doctor, <laughs> and he's named Croker. Like they named him that on purpose. And then there's um, uh, is it like it's like like Captain like Lieutenant Candy or something like that? Who's like this huge burly like mean like meanest cuss on the planet? Um, and so it's like that. They all they're all given names, and they never go by their real names and everything. And so that is. That is definitely uh, like I definitely saw that when I started reading the Malison books. But I I love the, I it is a series that I think I think all ten books the story that all ten books are telling is amazing. But I think I think the the overall is stronger than the individual books um, because some of the books I don't like as much. Um, but when I'm done, I never regret finishing reading the series and being like, man, like what a journey. So. Yeah. Alex says, by the way, Alex, I saw your question about last kingdom. I haven't watched uh, the new season yet, but I'm that's like that and expanse are my two number one priorities. I know I haven't, haven't got, uh, got to them yet, but I really want to. Alex says, my buddy just came off Malazan and picked up black company is like, what is this terrible pacing? Way too much happening too quickly. Nothing feels important. <laughs> that's because their, their, expe- their expectations are wrong. Like people that read it because they like Malazan are not, are expecting something that, they're not going to get Hmm. Glenn cook is a very sparse writer. And yes, a lot happens very quickly because it's from the analyst's perspective. And so he may or may not be an unreliable narrator, but we get what he thinks is important. Um, But there is some of that, there is some of that like big thing, a big thing happens in like, you know, a couple sentences. Um, But Erickson does that too, but it's certainly not like the prose isn't, isn't, what Erickson's is. It is very, it is very workhorse. It is very like, it is very spare, uh, sparse, skeletal, kind of what it needs to be. Book two is much more like a traditional novel and book two is really good. I love book two. It's almost like a horror novel. Um, oh, I'm in on that. Yeah. Book, like, even if you didn't like book, that's what I always, I always tell people like read the first trilogy. And if you don't like it, the books are 300 pages. Like that's it. Yeah. That, that's the big thing that drew me. I got the omnibus, the one with the cool cover and it has the first three books. That's what, that's what I got. And I'm really, I, I'm very interested in reading it because I know it's a precursor to a lot. Even some people say grim dark and all those things. Yeah. I I'm not expecting a world beater out of it, but I'm expecting a unique experience. And as long as I can get through the right, like if the writing clicks with me, it clicks with me. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and look, look right here. Justin and Jake are both like book two, book two, like shadows linger. Is so good. Yeah. It seems like everyone's really big on, it was in my top 10 books. Jake said also no disclaimer, another optimist. All right, let's go. I believe it'll be published one day. <laughs> um, Jake, by the way, your collabs, and I know you said this, and this is a random callback, but uh, I really want to get more into GGK, uh, Guy Garvel K, uh, this year, if I if it's possible, after I finish all the stuff I'm supposed to read. So once that happens, Jake, we can collab a lot, because I, I think Guy Garvel K is going to be one of my favorite writers ever. Um, I, want, I want to read the, San, the San, Serentine Mosaic really bad 
really badly. I'm doing publication order, even though everyone tells me to skip uh, um, Finnevar yeah. Tapestry. Everyone says, don't read it. It's just classic. Fan. I'm like, nope, I'm reading publication order. Yeah, I want, I want to read more GGK, but like GGK is a writer that I loved. I love Tagana, but GGK is just a writer that I, yeah, I've got to be, I've got to be in, in the, like in the headspace to read GGK. And again, I don't want to start anything else that isn't part of a read along. Yeah. Part of a commitment. Like I'm that, trying to finish some series. That's where I'm at with Guy Gav. Okay. It's like, I need I, that. Uh, when I put out my top eight books, I have to read. I actually stick to that as much as possible. Like it, yeah. it hurt me last year that I almost didn't do steel remains. And I just ended up doing it because I was yeah. like, I'm not waiting anymore. Jake man carrying things. Jake, is you missed, you missed the Brando Sando conversation. We talked about it for like, an hour i think that's like the second hour yeah i was just dissing everybody bro yeah jake hates brandon sanderson and all of the booktubers <laughs> sorry jimmy hates brandon sanderson and all of the booktubers confirmed it's not true it's not true alan quit spreading this false heard information it here. that's what uh that's what someone someone said i forget who said i'm it. reporting your channel when i'm done that's fine can you fine. do that is that a thing sure like i mean i don't know what they'll do with it but you'll i mean you sure you surely can um, and yes, Jake is right. Glenn Cook does not like commas. Everything is a sentence. I'm down. That's like the like the the theme or the the, the the tagline of of like book ten is soldiers live. Period. And wonder why. Period. I and love Jake it. Was like if I didn't know, like if I didn't know that was our that was from a Glenn Cook book, I definitely could have spotted that that was from a, that was a Glenn Cook statement. The fact that those two things are sentences when anyone else would not make those things two separate sentences that used to be fun fact jake when i played xbox 360 because after xbox 360 i swapped back over to sony um that was my uh gamer tech like your my profile quote was soldiers live period and wonder why period um because i love that book i love book 10 because that's one that i was waiting in high school all the first nine were written and then we were having to wait for book 10 and then book 10 came out and me and my buddies who had read the series, we read it together and we're like, Oh, why not good ending? Like, so good. And then we immediately reread the series. So it ends, it ends well. I think, I think this one does stick the landing. I think it's, I think it's excellent. Also, I want to give a shout out to man carrying thing. Who's had like an enormous amount of success in the last year. Like 90,000. Uh, yeah. Insane. And he also, uh, his wife has started another channel called woman carrying thing. And they were talking about, uh, oh, really? like, they're talking about like film TV show and stuff. It's really good. They did an episode or like a discussion kind of thing about, um, midnight mass, which I, you know, pe people say is a masterpiece is overrated. I think it's a masterpiece. It's, I think it's one of the best TV shows. Is that I've ever a Netflix show? Yeah. I really, really liked it. By the way, did you hear about Cormac McCarthy coming out with two novels this year? Not sure if you're a fan, but I am hyped. I, so I actually did see this and it's funny because a lot of people make Cormac McCarthy jokes, kind of like they make germ jokes. Like they couldn't believe he released not just one book, but two books. Like what in the world? It's been six years. I think, I think since he's published, um, I have not read any Cormac McCarthy, but the road is the book of his that I want to read the most blood Meridian. I've heard like mixed things on. I don't know how I'd feel about it, uh, but the road is one of my favorite movies. So I, I imagine the book would be great. Literally the road in AP lit in high school. And it was one of the books from what, from what I remember. It was one of the books that I, I did not dislike as much as the others. Like there were like the road was okay. Like I didn't, I didn't hate the road. Catch 22 was my favorite book we had to read in, in high school. I hated great expectations. Um, Clockwork orange. It's like, screw that book. Catcher in the rye is the worst book I've ever read. Um, I actually bought catcher in the rye like a couple months so back. I've never read it. Much. I hate it so much. I hate everything about it. Well, I'm glad you didn't hate the road because Cormac McCarthy is someone yeah. that like, uh, he's so cool. polarizing. I'm not, I'm not in love with McCarthy's like writing style. That's what everyone says. His writing is apparently. But, like... but I do like the road. Um, I just like it's just not. It's not my favorite. Um, yeah. so I don't have a problem with uh with him. Um, I like Vonnegut. Okay. Um, but mostly, I mean, again, I mostly read fantasy or nonfiction books about Rome or Japan. Yeah. Or Japan. <laughs> so I don't, you know. Otherwise, McCarthy definitely is like one of the non fantasy writers that I'm really interested in. Um, and I, I will, I'm just, I absolutely just will have to read the road at some point. Um, no disclaimer. said, so did you guys talk about and or see Batman? I have not. I'll, I'll be waiting until it's on HBO max. Cause I'm not a superhero fan uh, out of all the superheroes though. I like Batman and Spider-Man the most. Um, so I will watch those new movies whenever they are available at the leisure of my 
couch. <laughs> yeah, I will go see it because I, I really want to see Paul Dano as the Riddler because I like Paul Dano, who I first saw in my favorite movie of all time, The Emperor's Club, um, as a mm. as a um, prep school kid. Um, but then he's, you know, the creepy priest and there will be blood. I drink your milkshake. And then um, now he's, you know, the Riddler. I want to see it. But speaking of that movie today, while I was sitting there trying, I'm trying to organize the vans down to Orlando, like down to the freaking Bush Gardens trip. Um, Cause you know, it's a fine calculus. You got to make sure the people in the vans, like get along with their drivers. One of them being me and that they're going to, and you know, the quiet people are going to be in, not in a van with one, whatever. I'm sitting there trying to right. do that. Freaking freshman comes up to me and he's like, Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, what do you think of like, what do you think of Batman's back? And just shows me a freaking picture of Robert Pattinson's like swole, like muscled back. And I knocked the phone out of her hand. I grabbed it and I threw it in my trash can right by my desk. And then I said, go sit down. And then the, the girl she's sitting with is like, um, Mr. Walker, if it wasn't like me that asked you to, to do that, can I have my phone back? I'm like, which one of y'all three told her to come up here and ask me about Robert Pattinson's back? And then one girl does like this. And it's and it's the other girl, like not the girl whose phone it was or the girl that came up. It's the troublemaker. And I'm like, guess your phone's going to stay in the garbage. She's like, but yeah, but Mr. Walker, did you see that back? I'm like, why do you think that I care about this? They're like, but his back. I'm like, who cares? I mean, I appreciate a good back. <laughs> Listen, laterals and rhomboids are very hard. Yes, but I'm trying to tell these children. I'm like, you know what? You know what Robert Pattinson doesn't have to do to get that swole? Sacrifice any time. The man works for a month and a half at a time and then sits there while waiting for the next project, has unlimited funds to hire people. And Probably on steroids. Do this stuff. Like, if he yeah. worked full time, like, if he let Robert Pattinson come do what I do and then still look like that. Yeah, oh, wait, you know, you it's just like one of those things. Like, you know, if someone's like really in Jimmy, shape and like, Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy, I realized. Listen, happened. I'm not going to talk smack on a meathead. I, mean, I know. Never, I realized that's going to happen. Conversation. I was talking to the wrong person about this. Listen, you talked about loyalty earlier. Okay? I did. I know. No, that's good. It's good for you. Like, <laughs> at least I wasn't tricked into talking about it with Philip, who'd be like, you know what? Like, I agree because, you know, I'm at the gym every day because Philip's like, <laughs> John. Dude, but, Philip's such a bully. I know. He, Philip is the bulliest. He's the worst. Yeah. So I was just asking those kids, like, why do you, I don't care about Robert Pattinson's back. Like, take your phone. Like, and then I gave it back and said, shut up. Leave me alone. Like, I'm trying to do this. <laughs> Mr. Panther, thank you very much. Said you both are goats. Love you guys. Thank and, you. Uh, no disclaimer says, I mean, it oh is my pretty God, nice back I, don't, on. I don't care. But now when I go see that movie, I'm not going to not be able to, like, I'm going to pay unwarranted attention to this man's back because it's been brought to my attention by this thirsty freshman <laughs> thirsty freshman <laughs> words i never thought i'd hear you say that's fantastic the girl who was helping me make these make this freaking seating chart thing she was like i'm thirsty but i'm not that thirsty and i'm like is this what it's gonna be like in the van are y'all gonna be talking about this kind of crap in the van she's like you no, sure you want everyone myself. doing stuff together are you what? sure you don't want them to disperse and do their own thing yeah i know right it's like no she's like like I don't show I don't show people my stuff. I'm like, good, keep it yourself. Like, don't think while I'm driving, I want to see anybody's back. Ms. Walker, look at this. <laughs> I'll throw it out the window and you can go get it off of, you can go get it off of I-10. <laughs> like they show me the like the dumbest crap. I'm like, why do you think I care about this? I don't they're like, Ms. Walker, I'm at like 345 Snapchat streaks. I'm like, I don't care. Why would I care about that? Listen, there's 105 people in here. And you, you've all heard how much Alan loves this. So someone needs to take a still shot of Alan being happy in a video and then stick it right next to the picture of Robert Pattinson's back and make that a meme for me, please. Please. I don't care. If you do that, I will have to show that to my students because they will find it hilarious. Alan, please fly the van. Oh, I, I, I can't do that because you know who's in my van? Five girls and one guy. That's in my van. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, someone make that for me, please. <laughs> I'm already my mine's the loud van because I don't let sleep. I don't we leave at four in the morning. You don't sleep in my van. Your job is to make sure Walker stays awake. Like you're not gonna sleep. Like you wanted the sleepy van, that's another one. So make like live or die, make your choice. Like you can go in another van if you want, but you're gonna stay awake in mine. And so they're gonna <laughs> someone's got to make it happen 
So good. So I good. hate it. I hate it. Alan, I have a question for you. Uh, okay. It's not a very fun question. Uh, not as fun as Robin Passon's back. Um, but as long as we move off of this. <laughs> well, we were talking about like uh, McCarthy and like how his writing's weird. And you were kind of talking about Glenn Cook and how he's very distinct in his writing. Uh, what comes before? No, what comes first for you? The craft of writing or the story? When you're reading a book, you know what I'm saying? Mm, that's a good question. Um, man, it depends. It, like, it's just it's just so hard to say because, like, I need the story to be good. Like, I just do. Like, it's got to mm-hmm. be something that. Otherwise, it's just people sitting in a room. Otherwise, you have like a like a British 18th century novel where they're not doing anything. They're just sitting around talking about how rich they are. Um, so I need the story, but the problem is if the story, it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. So Michael J. Sullivan's Theft of Swords, that is, it's not a badly written book, but it's also dumb. Like, like <laughs> it, it lean, like it is campy. Like it leans yeah. into camp and people who are like really big on like, you know, pros and stuff. You threw a snob alert at the beginning of that review. I did because people who are really big, like they, they're not going to like it because it's, it's just one of those things that is fun. It's supposed to be fun, but if you're not going to go into having fun, if you want it to be like the best written book with the most that makes the most sense you've ever read, you're not going to get that. Um, but at the same time, like I like to, th- I always like to think I'm a plot person. Like that's what it needs. But then, then I've got Daniel Abraham. Daniel Abraham is the is the is the the stick in my craw because Abraham don't nothing happen in those books. But Abraham is such a brilliant writer, and his character work is so great that. I really like that. I really like the way Abraham writes. So I think it's just, I don't know. I think I, I, I hate to say what I'm in the mood for because then I sound like I'm a mood reader. I'm not going to do it. So, um, well, I mean, that's, but that is certainly true. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's just, I think I do well managing expectations. I do most poorly when I am not expecting something or I'm mm-hmm. expecting one thing and I get another and it's a negative thing. Yeah. So, like, I know what I'm going into reading, like, God is Not Willing. It's a Steven Erickson book. I know what I'm going into. Mm-hmm. When I read a Discworld book, I know what I'm going into. When I read the next um, Ryeria book, I know what that's going to be. So I don't need to expect it. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not expecting, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, now, what does bother me about craft is if there's a bunch of typos and a lot of the same kind of sentence structure, like when it's, the exact same length of sentence over and over. Like it pops out and it bothers me. And a ton of like typographical errors and stuff. It's like, how are this, how are there this many typos in this book? Or like, what's going on? Like that stuff bothers me. Mm -hmm. But as far as there's not really a style I don't like, except Charles Dickens, who I hate. (laughs) You're not down. He was paid by the word. And it shows. Yeah. And I mean, if you like, if you like 18th century whaling, Herman Melville is good. But if you don't like, I don't know how you can enjoy Moby Dick if you're not interested in 18th century whaling, because that's what most of the book is. It's like, hey, you want to know what it's like to whale? Here it is. There's a bunch <laughs> of chapters on whaling. We're not going to see any whales. We're not going to see Moby Dick. That's that's like two chapters. <laughs> it's just we'll learn about how to make lamp oil and how, how much rope to bring. And, you know, it's just, whoo, there's a lot of information about whaling in that book. I've so, never read it, thankfully. Yeah. So so it's fine. Like, And in Stephen Erickson's books, the parts where they just, like, stare at their belly button and talk about, like, what is death? No, that's not my favorite. But it's not that I don't like Stephen Erickson's writing style. It's just that what we're talking about, I don't care. Like, let's move on. Like, can we see what happens later? Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know if that even began to answer your question. No, I, no, I, that, that. no. It, well, I, I'll be honest. I think the story comes first. I think the story comes first. Uh, Stephen King says that, and I actually think Stephen King's a great author. Like, I think, especially as he's grown, like over the years, like, yeah, I think he's a phenomenal writer. Um, but he actually believes story comes first before characters, before everything. He's like story, um, which I think is pretty interesting. 
Uh, also, uh, I want to acknowledge Gandalf the Black with the seven spot. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. He said, how would you compare the author of Berserk to other fantasy authors and Guts as a protagonist compared to some of the best fantasy characters? Uh, to be brief, <coughs> um, I think that Miura is one of the bravest people ever to do some of the things that he did, um, especially with the chance of someone misinterpreting what he's trying to do and thinking that it's just shock and awe, which it's not, in my opinion. Uh, and then guts as a protagonist compared to some of the, the best fantasy characters. It, he was not afraid to make guts seem very unlikable at points in the story um, while still having the skill to make him undeniably interesting. Uh, and that you still silently root that he'll become a better person as time goes on. And wow, what a way to highlight someone being the exception uh, when everyone else, you know, he's, um, He's the one suffering through all this, but he never gives up. It's pretty interesting. It's interesting stuff because Guts is all of this. He's terrible and amazing all at once. Um, so, yeah. Gandalf, thank you so much for the seven spot. I appreciate it. Uh, Marcus says that the writing comes first. For me, the author has to keep me engaged or else I get bored cl uh, quickly. Terrence says, started bringing it back up. I'm just curious. Is Alan a bigger fan of lats or traps? Um, I'm personally a whiff guy, so I'm going to go with lats. <laughs> no bashing Moby Dick. My favorite chapter is the description of the natural, uh, the nautical pulpit. Yeah. I, I, I told him, I'm like, I like Moby Dick because I like, I think whaling is like, I think whaling is fascinating. Most people don't. <laughs> Most people could not care less about 16th century or 18th century whaling. Um, so I like it. By the way, Jimmy, I just got a message from one of my students that said, I still feel like the band is on my arm. I'll never be safe again. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, traumatized. <laughs> That's amazing. They'll never forget that, dude. No, I know. I know. Cool. I know. Like l the last year I played it, like when it got to the last day, they were like, Miss Walker, I can't sleep. I cannot play this game anymore. It, I can't. Like it's too much anxiety. And he literally took his marker and marked himself. He's like, I'm out. I can't do it anymore. Like I, I, I dream about this game. Like when I, when I'm able to not off. So it's very stressful. And they all tell me how stressful it is, which is good. I like to, um inside a little terror. it's also yeah. something that's like not based around technology which is really cool because yeah. like you know obviously so much of everything we do is centered around that I, i've actually been talking to my wife about uh maybe getting an ipad to do the kindle app on it because i have a kindle but the kindle like touch features are very frustrating to me and if i'm going to become like a nine I, my goal is to become a primarily ebook reader because it makes a really? lot more, it just it makes a lot more sense dude like it in every single facet my eyes are getting worse um, and I know iPad screen, I know that, but still even the letters being bigger, it's a huge thing. Um, also the ability to highlight and export my notes and then stick them like where I do my reviews, which is all in Google docs and stuff. It's really cool. So, and room, <laughs> a lot of room, right? Uh, this is all full. I have five stacks of books here that I have no room for. I have another thing. We have a shelf upstairs, you know, it's getting a little unruly. Um, and I just think eBooks in general are just, you know, there's a lot going for him. But anyways, uh, I kind of want to do the iPad because the app was actually, but I think the app is better than the actual Kindle itself for the touch features. But uh, man, I don't want to stare at screens. That's the big thing. I started reading again. One of the reasons is because, you know, I code all day and I'm like, I just don't want to stare at a screen. So it's, it's a hard, it's a hard bargain for me. And that's kind of why I've also stopped playing video games a lot. I mean, obviously I'm in the Elden Ring, yeah. but before this, I mean, it's been very sparingly um, because I'm tired of looking at screens all the time. Yeah. That, that, that's your job also, which, you know, makes it worse. It's yeah. Like yeah. I am. Um, I like, if I could go, like, I think the app is better than the paper white. Also, mm -hmm. if I could go back before I bought my Kindle, I would buy the fire so that I could have the, you know, the, the, the 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 tablet experience as opposed to the paper white um but i like my kindle i think my kindle is super convenient just carrying this thing around is amazing oh no yeah and i and to be clear like i think the ink screen all that stuff tremendous i mean yeah. it's great uh and pat i i i the, my bigger issue is the actual literal hitting of the screen and stuff it's just so much smoother on a phone or an yeah, ipad 100 oh, um i just yeah I read yeah. a physical book faster than I do an ebook. And I also like holding a book. I don't, I don't know. I feel weird. Like I love how portable my Kindle is and there is a lot going for it. And I also like that I can get books. If I'm like, you want how much for the, this, this out of print paperback? 
Yeah. No, no, I'm not paying that. I will pay four dollars for the ebook. Thank you. Oh, well, even like Swan Song, uh, so it's 900 pages, and there's not a there's not a good edition that's affordable. They're the skin, dude. They're, they're their favorites. They're skinny, mass market paperbacks like the Dresden. Yeah, dude, 900 pages. Imagine it. And that's what I said. I said I'll just get the ebook. Not a chance. I'm doing that. I hate <laughs> the disdain on your face. Those like. I I do not understand their purpose because they're taller. So I don't. It's terrible. Like, are they saving paper? Is that what it is? But they're awful. Like people already hated mass market paperbacks. And I hate these. And I'm the biggest MMPB stand there is. I would rather they're read terrible. mass market paperback of any book over any other format. But you cannot find them. Mass market paperback is so rare now. It is either a floppy paperback, a big floppy paperback. Which I like. I'm a big fan of the floppy. I read them so slow, Jimmy. <laughs> the words are so spaced out. I read them so slow. Dude, some of the font in the Malazan ones are tiny. No, I love the font in the freaking Malazan MMPBs. No, no, I'm talking about the floppy. The trade paperbacks are the font is this big. I mean, it is so small. It's they're small in the MMPB. Like that's I'm I'm upgrading. I'm losing portability for the same font size. I don't need that. <laughs> like, oh, why don't they have more? The only MMPBs they release are those awful skinny ones. And Jim Butcher oh. needs to get a new publisher so they will stop <laughs> because both of his series are like that. He should do well, Kickstarter. What? Yeah, you should do a Kickstarter. Kickstarter, it, it's this new thing. Um, it, it changed the industry. And so, the, I, like, I ordered Dresden from Britain. I have all the Same. I British Orbit ones because Same. I love those. Like, I think, and I and I also love Orbit from Britain. Thank you very much. The I love the aesthetic. The 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 same aesthetic throughout same. all of them. Like, I really like that. But I ordered the British one, the British MPB of Codex Alera. And yeah, it isn't a skinny one, but I don't know why Britain does this because only with a freaking British paperback. So all you Brits, listen up, answer me this. Why is the freaking paper on the paperback so hard? Why are the covers so stiff? It's like, like it is, it is the size of an MMPB, but you can tell the cover is really hard. Like it's not, it's not the same as an American MMPB cover. And it feels weird in my hands. It's not as good as the American uh, mass market paperbacks. Yeah, that's right. America, <laughs> freedom. <laughs> so I'm hoping that someone is going um, to explain it. Explain it to me. And What's wrong with your trees over there? People are going to say, I've never noticed that. Like, oh, <laughs> I've noticed that the books are stiffer spine wise. Except, one? huh? Which ones? The skinny ones? No, 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 no. Uh, the British versions of books seem to be stiffer in the spine, except for those Realm of the Elderlings I have back there. They are the best books I've ever like if handling wise. Amazing, dude. Nice. Tremendous. I've got I've got the one with curly headed fits in the front. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Paul Rudd. Is that, is that he it looks just like Paul Rudd? Yeah, I've got those. I've got those like the last the, when I was in the 90s when I saw um uh, Realm of the Al oh, sorry, Farseer trilogy in the bookstores. Those covers weren't good either. The one standing on a cliff with like the purple and the pink. Oh, I disagree. I like that. Everyone hates that's Whalen. Michael Whalen did that. I don't love Michael Whalen as much as everybody else does. I acknowledge he is extremely talented and his contribution to the and hit. I know, I know, I know. And his contribution to the to the fantasy art community is amazing. I'm writing bad comments on your channel. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Like I don't I don't dislike Michael <laughs> Whalen, but I I acknowledge he's an excellent artist. He's just not my favorite. I just it's just not it I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't love it. Listen. I don't love Michael Whalen. Listen, I, I, there's I, a lot of things that you've said. Alan hates Michael Whalen confirmed. That has been offensive. I don't I'm not talking bad about Michael Whalen. I'm just saying he's not my favorite. You know, you said a lot of mean things about Brandon Sanderson earlier. No, that was you. Oh, that was me. Uh, but this is where I draw the line, Alan. Um, I want to thank you for coming on, but uh, I, you're not welcome back. Michael Whalen did something. You've seen your me. last chatting with nuts, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. This I'm man is in charge of that dark tower cover right there. Right here. Wait, can I do it? Yeah, right here. 
Did he write? He he did the Gunslinger. It's one of the best covers of all time. I like that cover. That's a good cover. I like that one. Listen, I was gonna put you over in our wrestling match, but I'm having serious. Okay, look. Okay, look. I don't man, know if we can work together. Let me walk it back. I didn't know he did the Dark Tower covers. I like those covers, <laughs> dude. The Stormlight covers. I mean, the I mean, Tad Williams cover. Excuse me, sir. I mean, they're they're good. Like I'm I'm saying they're good. You're you're not hearing me. This uh, Alan hates Michael Whalen. Confirmed. It's not confirmed. He's happy that he's not finishing the Ostenard books. I heard. I'm this not. Is, this is why is the why is the ice titan from the animated Hercules movie on this Oathbringer cover? It's the first time I've ever seen this. It's literally the it's literally the titan from from Hercules. Now watch someone who's read who, someone who's read all the Cosmere is about to spoil it. Be like, oh, that's this huge. Spoiler. Well, well we, can, we can't tell you. And they're just gonna drop it. Um, but I don't hate Michael Whelan. They're good. It's just oh, this one's good. I do like this one a lot. What is this one? Who's, oh, your favorite, who's your favorite then, Alan? Have you seen this Fahrenheit 451? Uh, Michael Whalen one? This one's excellent. Look up Fahrenheit 451, Michael Whalen. I love this cover. It's not fantasy, but all right. Uh, let's see. Fahrenheit 451. Whalen cover. This better be good. Oh, it was good. I thought it was Gunslinger for Zan. Look at that. Oh, my. And you said this guy had no talent. You called him a two bit oh, said- artist. I did not. That is incredible. I, I mean, said, I said, balls on this aren't my favorite. I pr- I prefer. Um, so it's probably like the photo realism, like which is not my favorite. Just like in general. I mean, folks, this is the thing. Alan said that this artist had no talent. I, I did not. You that can- is giggity gorgeous. Oh, flip it over. You're you're not seeing the whole picture with the back. Look at the back. Wait, how do I see the back? Now I got now I have to stop sharing. I just Googled, I just Googled uh if you Google just Michael Whalen and look at the images, it's in the third row. Or sorry, it's in the second row. The the whole the whole photo. If you just Google Michael Whalen. Yeah, Google Michael Whalen and then click on images and it's in the it's in the second row of of uh Danger Will Turn. You'll see the whole picture. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that thing in the background, whatever that is, that little demon hound. Wow, that does kind of give you Dark Tower vibes, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. I thought that was rolling for a second. I'm like, when, what, what scene is this? I think oh, it's – I can't believe that you said this guy was a – I do. This is an incredible cover. I just in, – as, in a, as a general rule, like Michael Whalen is not my favorite. I think he's very talented. And he is a good artist. His – the style with which he, he, he arts – is not just not my favorite of the styles. Listen, I, I all I'm saying is special guest referee when we go to you know what? I take it back. Michael Whalen is the best cover artist of all time. Thank you. Oh, finally. Alan loves Michael Whalen. <laughs> Confirmed. Confirmed. Dude, oh. I'll tell you who's incredible is Jonathan M. Burton. Um, he did the uh Folio Society, a song of ice and fire, and I never hear him mentioned. I think he is just absolutely incredible. I'm trying to I find mean, like I turned it. I, I I got a bunch of attorneys that popped up. Uh, yeah, it's if you type in actually, there's not a ton on here. Uh, John Othan. Wow, I misspelled that so bad. I just did Jonathan Burton Ice and Fire. No, these are excellent. I like these. I like these. Yeah, they're very good. Um, some of the illustrations are just incredible though. Um, but he never gets really mentioned, you know, uh, I like with, it. and I like the fact that there are people, but it's still stylized. Like I like stylized more than the more photorealistic kind of thing. Yeah. Like and, Michael Whalen. No, Michael Whalen is my favorite. Um, <laughs> other than Michael Whalen. um, Mark Simonetti. I love, I love yeah. I Mark Simonetti is awesome. I follow him on Twitter just to get his freaking like his picture of, uh, freaking cinder of the Chandrian. Like that one, it's literally the second thing that pops up when you search his name. It is freaking he's he's fantastic. I love him as a cover artist. Um oh, like wow. he's really good. This is probably like kind of graphic to put up, but I'm gonna share it because I think it's tremendous. Jimmy Band, Jimmy Band from YouTube. Maybe. Um, I hope not. That suck. Yeah, uh, Mark Simonetti's insane. Like this guy's so talented. Yeah, doing? this is uh Daenerys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, eating man. the eating the 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 heart. The th- yeah that uh and then this is sansa meeting her knight uh out in the godswood which is pretty cool 
Um, but he just does such good illustrations. They're actually kind of hard to find, probably because they don't want you to see them. They'd rather you buy the books. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, please stop bullying, uh, buying the fully side editions before I buy <laughs> <laughs> no nah, dude buy them all they're great totally worth they're actually really great to read that's the best thing about folio society at least these ones they're actually readable whereas in my leather bound way of kings is phenomenal it's an amazing book i do not feel comfortable reading leather bounds i don't know why it just doesn't and even say actually on the kickstarter even said like um these aren't meant to be like heavily read whereas my folios they feel very readable got to give it to folio society for that my like my my hands are so greasy like i can't touch nice books with them so i read crappy books i just can't do it like yeah i i hardbacks i just take the um the sleeve off i i, I have some back here actually demon and white and the god is not willing are both sitting on top of my uh dagger you know why i like christopher rocchio because his books are available in mass market paperback like that's, yeah. another, that's another thing that ha like has me wanting to read them i'm like thank you christopher rocchio Thank you. Like, uh, I, like, I like that there's a hardback option for you guys, but I like that there's a mass market paperback for me. When you read the uh, Sun Eater, please just message me constantly. <laughs> like I'm begging you. I just feel like, so confident. It sucks. You know what was better than this? Emperor's Blades. That's what I'm say. I'm like, you know what? This book, <laughs> this book is the Michael Whalen of fantasy books. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's pulling no punches, folks. <laughs> Jesus, whiz. Get out the black. Thank you for the two seventy nine. Appreciate it, man. He said thoughts on Rings of Power. Uh, just like about everything else, I feel like online, I am way more positive on. Uh, I don't care. In fact, this is something going forward that I would like to do: is stop putting so much. Um, and I'm talking about myself. Stop putting so much uh, emphasis on trailers and teasers because at the end of the day, we just have to wait and see what happens with the product. I think that that's the best that's the best course of action to take. I don't think like being mindlessly positive is as per, you know, it's not, it, if we go ahead and say like through the trailer, 10 out of 10 show, no matter what, that's silly because we, like, we have to see the art to judge it like in its entirety in the way it's supposed to be presented. Uh, and then also just being super negative about it is like exhausting to me. I don't know. Uh, I'm excited for the rings of power. How about that? I'm excited. And I know a lot of people who are a lot smarter than me that are uh, feel optimistic that it could be a telling of a Tolkien S story, uh, while it might not be, you know, hundred percent accurate to everything, uh, which I'm also okay with. I, I happen to be in that crowd as well. So. Mark Simonetti did Discworld illustrations. I'm just that. I'm just What's like Discworld? in rapture. <laughs> that's some. That's a stupid turtle story, right? You know what? Your mom. Oh wait, <laughs> no wait. Your mom's on the chance. No, I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Say it with your chest. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> your, mom, your mom watches the stream. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, um, Jimmy's mom. I'm so mama sorry. Nuts. Yeah, mama nuts. I apologize. <laughs> what and are your thoughts on Rings of Power, Alan? Is that the Lord of the Rings? That's the Lord of the Rings show, yeah, right? The Tolkien show, yeah. I don't care. Like, <laughs> like, like you I, don't care as in like let's see it or like you just I don't, don't like how many I haven't watched the trailer. I won't I won't watch the show. Um, I'm kind of thinking about not watching the trailer for House of the Dragon. Oh, that's got like how how do I take Matt Smith seriously as a Targaryen? Oh, I, I actually think so. I've never watched Doctor Who because I don't care. Then about we'll it. be fine. But I think he looks very much like a Targaryen, at least what I in my head. Yeah, he's just like he's a he was a, in the crown though and did very well. Yes, but I kept wondering why the doctor's so mad. It's like, what's wrong? <laughs> did you lose your fez and that's why you're mad? Well, like, you should not watch bad shows, Alan. I don't. I watch Doctor Who, which is good. <laughs> that's not what I heard. I heard oh, it's a no. Her, her, I heard it's a <laughs> Currently, it's bad. It used to be good. I've heard it's the Michael Whalen of. Which means it's the best show ever. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Um, Rings of Power. So fantasy adaptations take themselves too seriously. They take themselves too seriously and they make them too generic. They make themselves too generic and they remove, they suck the life, the spirit of what people liked about the books. They suck it out of it. And it's all, it's all just, it's, it's too self-serious. Like they're all too mm -hmm. self-serious. All of them. They always lack the charm that the source material provides us. Like even The Witcher, which I think is fairly well done, like 
it doesn't have any of the any it doesn't have any of the levity really that's in that's in the Witcher games, which I think are the best uh, best version of that. Like I think that's the best way to tell it is to hmm. you know yeah. Geralt's, Geralt's funny in The Witcher Three, like he's funny in The Witcher Two and Three, um, and that's that is the thing that I think that Arcane did the best is it did not take itself too seriously and it didn't have to. It was a, it was an animated hmm. thing, and so as you know as an adaptation from you know, a source material. Um, but again, it's not like it's not, it's, it's kind of different, but they still, it did, it, it winked at the, like we got a freaking Imagine Dragon song playing at us in the middle of a freaking action scene. You know, that's also the name of the episode. I mean, you know, it's, it's very, it's very wink, wink meta. Um, and so because of that, it, it had a, like whether you liked it or not, it had a unique, voice and it had a it had a life of its own it wasn't just this lifeless thing of like oh look at how epic this next epic is gonna be like that's what that's what i'm worried this lord of the rings thing is gonna be like what if y'all made it fun like what if y'all just made it fun instead of trying to make it oh well the movie and the lord of the rings movies were fun the, right? the lord of the rings movies do an excellent job of keeping the spirit of the books i completely agree i completely agree they yeah. did a great job, and that's part due to Peter Jackson and part due to the performances. It did a great job of still having that, like, you know, that kind of hopeful, and it wasn't self-serious, you know, like, um, took, you know. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's also about being able to turn it on when you need to turn it on. And sometimes shows attempt to do both, and then they miss on one. And then that leaves a lot of people out in the dark, uh, you know out in the cold on, on certain things. I did feel like the wheel of time the, the, that I watched, I didn't watch it all. Uh, I was, I had that feeling like this is really slow and serious at some moments. And I'm just like, man, like, you know, my wife would kind of look at me and be like, this is, this is cringy. You know, it's, it felt cringy. It's just so self-serious. And um, that's a good way to put it. Self-serious. Yeah. Every fantasy movie that comes out is like that every, and then, Video game movies either do that or they go too far in the other direction where they're like, look at how like wink, wink, look at how self-referential wink, wink this is. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yes. I, I, at least you're trying, but you have gone too far in the other direction. This is dumb. Please stop. So. <sighs> I, I I just know Jace from the video because I played League. I, I like Jace as the top laner. I don't know. Jace. He's the worst character in that show. He's the worst. He's 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 why. Without he's a, spoilers, can you tell me? Okay, yes. Without spoilers, Jace has no personality. Jace has the personality of the person he is talking to. I'm right here, he, dude. Jeez. He has no like he has no opinions of his own. His opinions are the person who's whispering the opinions in his ear. He changes like his stance on things. Out of nowhere, because someone new came up to him. Uh, like, freaking Heimerdinger's talking to him. He says, oh, we can't do that. That's a bad idea. And Jace is like, you're right. Like, oh, okay, I won't do that. And then someone says, oh, but for the greater good. He's like, yes, you're right, for the greater good. And it's just like, Jace, have an opinion. And then when they time skip, the only thing they time, here's how Jace is time skipped. They give him a five o'clock shadow. That's it. <laughs> Everyone else has a new, like, design, and they give him a five o'clock shadow. He's just a dunce. Freaking Jace. You have a meathead. And then there's this weird shirtless scene with him where it's like. I feel like you're describing me, honestly. <laughs> this is shirtless scene. I'm so, it, there's, a, there's a scene of his back while he's like oh. blacksmithing something, if, oh. that, if that's your thing. Yep, exactly, Arian. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, you kind of just described me in a lot of ways. Fence sitter uh, adapts the personality he's talking to. This is a. Is this an intervention? It's. Is it for me? It's not. It's not. Jimmy, no. You Jay sounds like a swell Jimmy, guy. Jimmy, you have a personality. Stop it. Stop it. You're not you're not Jace. Jace is so dumb. Andy Smith, uh, who oh, is a great friend of the channel. Andy, how are you doing, my friend? Alan and Nuts, what's the best video game movie of all? Time? I had an answer for this and I've forgotten it. So now there's so many that like I forget about. Um like I actually think some of the Resident Evil movies aren't terrible. I, I mean I agree with that. Um, yeah, um, I would. I would never call them good. I didn't see the Warcraft movie. I heard mixed things about the Warcraft movie. I'm not looking at a list of all the um, video game movies because I have seen. I have seen one that I liked, and I'm trying to f figure out what it is. Hmm. Um, 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 I know there's like big ones that I'm not thinking of. 
that are that are good? So, I mean, I have enjoyed some of the Resident Evils once I got over the fact that, I mean, I guess it's Resident Evil. Uh, I mean, Umbrella's a thing. Wesker's a thing. Like, I mean, I guess. So that's fine. But, I mean, I wouldn't consider them good. Also, yes, we are playing an Obsessed with Elden Ring. Me and Alan have been... <laughs> <laughs> Scott said the Warcraft movie was a special kind of awful. Do you know what I think it's what I think it's gonna be? Like, and I haven't seen it, but I want to. And what from what I've heard, I honestly think it's going to be um Sonic the Hedgehog. Because I think Sonic the Hedgehog, from what everything I hear, is they leaned into it and it they just made it fun especially if they're fixed the the abomination that they were going to make sonic look like and so i actually want to see like and, and and jim carrey apparently also like you know like just choose the scenery he's like jim carrey like embraces it and goes who, and who I, I find to be very funny i do too and yes. i want to see i think jim carrey is very talented i think he may be a little much for some people um and so i really want to see the second one with freaking Idris Elba as Knuckles, which is something I didn't know I wanted until I saw that. Um, and so I think because it's the one that keeps like the spirit of the game, mm -hmm. I think I need to see it because all these other ones are just all like real self serious movies. Let me tell you what it's not Super Mario Brothers from 1993. No. What no. an awful movie. Are you going to watch the Halo TV show? Because I actually am kind of interested because as a teenager, I read the first three Halo books and I love them. Uh, what's this, I, what, what it, it's on Paramount Plus and it actually, I think it looks kind of cool, I, but I'm sure someone's going to tell oh, me. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me let me take back everything I just said. There's a, there's a correct answer to the best video game movie of all time. It is the first Pokemon movie uh, with Mewtwo. Mewtwo Strikes Back. That is yeah. the best. That movie game. slapped. That movie. Uh, that movie's freaking amazing. Ninety-five Mortal Kombat was good. I like that. Ninety-five Mortal Kombat. What I I'm not I'm not certain I can say it was good, but I definitely liked it. I love it. Yeah, I, I still could watch it to this day. Yeah, it is. I even watched is, the new one that came out on HBO Max during COVID, and it, like, it wasn't good, but like. It was fun. It was fine. I think I just remember being disappointed because there's like so much potential with that franchise. Um, oh, thank God. Someone else is. Interested what, what is, what is, is that? What's, what's that going to come on? I promise you, I don't have Paramount one. plus. I don't have it either, but I might get it for the halo show because well, if you watch it and say it's good, I might watch it. Well, I have terrible taste in television and movies. So, okay. Don't listen, well, then, don't listen to me. Then, well, like I un, un I ironically, is that, is that how you say? Uh, love battlefield earth, which is rated the worst movie of all time. Like as a kid, I thought it was the Travolta movie. Oh yeah, it's a Scientology movie. It's so bad. But I was a kid when I saw it, so I have like an affinity. <laughs> Whenever Travolta like pulls out the head, like this, <laughs> it's so bad, dude. <laughs> Movie's terrible. Jim I'd love not, to read the book. Jim, it's not a good movie. Yeah, video games just don't translate well. It enough. is because. In their attempt to broaden their appeal, they remove what was special about the game and they make it generic action movie. Kind of like, like what they do with all the remakes of old yes, movies. Yes. Like Resident Evil, I was told, and this made me so sad, because the new Resident Evil came out and I saw that they were in the Spencer Mansion. They're in the mansion. And I was like, they're returning to what the freaking thing's about. And then people told me, it's just in a mansion. It has nothing to do with Resident Evil. I'm like, no, why? Why? Yeah. They don't, they don't trust that they, they don't trust anything. They're going to stick with what they think is going to work as opposed to what has proven to work on this specific platform. They don't think that they just, they think too little of people, which makes me sad because I think Resident Evil tells an extremely and it's it's bizarre enough. That crap's weird enough without you having to freaking change it. You know, it's true. <sighs> and they are great narrative games. I agree. I agree. Ba Michael Mer uh, Merlino says Battlefield Earth is special. It is so bad in every aspect. It's actually worth watching. Uh, yeah. If you don't laugh during Battlefield Earth, you don't have a, you don't have a sense of humor. So bad. It's so, so bad. bad and so good at being terrible. Rampage was bad, but like I love Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Like I love, I love the Rock. Same. So, yeah. yeah. Like I like I'll watch something that the Rock is it because the Rock. Everything I hear about the Rock, 
he has such a great work ethic. Like he's always like a good attitude on set. He like works really hard. And I think it's because he wants to be taken seriously, you know? So he's just like, he goes for it. He's in the dumbest freaking movies, but Dwayne The Rock Johnson is not afraid. Like I loved him when he was a guest host on SNL. Always the funniest crap because The Rock, it didn't matter what you asked him to do. You want to put on a dress? Rock's going to wear a dress. Like The Rock will do anything. And he's actually got decent comedic timing. I like The Rock. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's he's got talent. Yeah. Yeah. So He's the Scorpion King, bro. D- dude, I went and saw the Scorpion King because Dwayne The Rock Johnson's in it. And that's a terrible yeah. movie. Not good. Not good at all. Very I, bad. I like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Very, very bad. Not good. I love. I have not seen that most recent one. Red, something on Netflix with with Ryan Reynolds, who I, is insufferable. You couldn't even. You couldn't even. I have no you idea. You don't watch that TV. I mean, it's a movie, but it's like the it's like the most expensive movie produced on netflix ever or something you send me 1100 page fantasy book i'm reading it you tell me to watch a two-hour movie i'm like i'm out you know i'm bad about movies i'm really bad about movies it's just it's just the way of the world man like it's not time i need more time <laughs> i just need more time i will say like talking all this out tonight i feel so much more motivated to read than i have in the last week me too, but I'm so tired. You know what I'm going to do when I get off? I'm going to lay on the couch and do a crossword puzzle or play Elden Ring, even though I need to read. Like, you know what? No, I'm going to read. I'm going to I'm gonna do it. I'm going to read. I got to finish, I gotta finish the book. I got to finish the book. Andy, um, says, I uh, thank you. Andy says, next level thought, video games don't translate to movies because they have different narrative goals. Movies, books tell you about a story, while video games try to encourage a player to make a story. Not That's the games that I play. <laughs> games i play tell me a story and that's how i like mass it. effects could be a great adaptation if they didn't mess it up but it, they do it right it but the choices good. are also the best part about mass effects so yeah you just pick one like you just you just make your shepherd as long as they keep him from being like they they just got to keep the heart of the series because otherwise it's generic ba space marine like doing crap that nobody cares about. You have to keep what makes Mass Effect special. Like you have, they won't put Garrus in it. They won't. They will. It won't. You don't think? No, no, they won't. They they will put something else. They'll put some BA humans with him, and it and they won't. I no, they got to put Garrus. They won't I, because that's what we think. Are we making a bet? We don't think. Are we making a bet? I will bet you right now. What are we betting? Like, I'll bet what ten dollars. No, no, no. You, uh, you have to read any book I want you to. Deal, deal. I'll read any same, book same, you want same to. for you. Okay, if, Garrus. If will they be produce the Mass Effect TV show, Garrus will not be in it. There will be a character named Garrus in the show. I believe that. I don't believe it will be Garrus. Okay, so we're saying get bo- relatively saying accurate Garrus, video the, game. Garrus. Um, okay. Car- it's not Kardashian. What's the what's bloody Garrus's last name? Garrus the Tory <laughs> from the Mass Effect. He will not be in it. I think there will be something named Garrus, just like in Mario Brothers. There were Goombas. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So so yeah, it's um it, it'll be interesting. Uh J- Johnny Come Lately says, Do you have any Roman history book recommendations, Alan? I have a bunch. So uh, Julius um, Caesar is one of them because you told yeah, me. Yeah, it just that. depends on uh, uh, what your level of interest is. So um, there are three. My three favorite Roman historians uh, uh, are Philip Freeman, um, Anthony Everett, and Adrian Goldsworthy. Adrian Goldsworthy is the most comprehensive, but he's also going to have the most academic style. It's not super academic. If you want that, there are really, really dry books that have even more, but they're really dry. So Adrian Goldsworthy is, I mean, he is the end all be all. Like it's, it, it's super comprehensive but it will be denser. Philip Freeman is on the opposite side and it, it will read more narratively, um, but will be, it won't be as comprehensive, but it reads like a narrative. Like Philip Freeman's Julius Caesar is like reading, it's like reading a novel, um, but it's also historically accurate. And then Anthony Everett is, he's my favorite because he splits the difference. So he has a book called The Rise of Rome. He has um, a book called Augustus. Um, so Rise of Rome is, is essentially uh, founding through through Punic Wars, I think. Um, maybe it goes to the to Caesar. Um, and then he's got a book about Cicero, which is during Caesar's the last century republic. And he has one about Augustus um, as well. I think those are his three Rome books. Um, Goldsworthy has something on anything in Rome you could ever want. Um, and then Tom Holland, not not Spider-Man. 
<laughs> Tom Holland has some really good books on Rome as well. Like Rubicon about Caesar, um, Caesar civil war is, is excellent. So cool. any of those, but those three authors, Adrian Goldsworthy, Philip Freeman, and Anthony Everett, you can't go wrong with. I love all three of them. Uh, do you like Mike Duncan's history of Rome podcast? Um, I, okay. So people always ask me, I have a friend and every single, almost everything he says when he comes over, almost every story he, he, he tells begins with, I was listening to a podcast and I finally had to say, Andrew, how many hours of podcast do you listen to a day? And where do you, where do you get the time? Because you, every story starts with, I was listening to a podcast. I don't actually listen to a lot of podcasts. I don't know how people find the time. If I'm listening to something, it's an audio book. As we're on a um, podcast. Like what? As we're doing a podcast. I don't consider this a podcast. Like it's a video, you know, like I, like I watch YouTube. Um, like I watch, I watch booktube, which mm -hmm. I guess if it was just audio would be a podcast, but like Roman, like the, the, the only history, history of Rome podcast I listen to is called Emperors of Rome with I'm your host. And I forget who it is, but there's always, he's always got this, this female, uh, uh, uh professor, on it with him and i forget it's called emperors of rome i used to listen to that a lot um but otherwise i just don't now i watch history historia civilis which is a um roman history like video thing and when i start doing actual history videos i will be linking like i'll be like look you want more on this go watch historia civilis video like because mm -hmm. he does the battles um so when i'm teaching in my in my classes like I'll give the battle in brief and I'll be like, yeah, but a lot cooler happened, but this guy's done this video. So let's watch this video. And it's just, it, he does so much with these little squares. It's just these little squares moving, but they have like dialogue tags and they're really, they're really good. That's I, awesome. I, I just showed them to my students and one kid went home and watched all the videos and just ordered a Historia Civilis like sweatshirt <laughs> because he's obsessed with the channel now. Um, but I will look into history of Rome. Um, podcast by mike man uh, you know how cool would it be for someone to do something like that for malazan History all the malazan. big battles just like oh. the, the maneuvering because erickson really puts a lot of time into the positioning and stuff man. i would do it because i like that stuff if i had time the, the talent i don't have the, i don't oh. have the talent to make videos like that well uh, it's a, it's a lot of animation that I don't know how to do. Yeah, it, the animation stuff is really hard. Having uh, what After Effects or whatever it is, everybody uses. Uh, Gandalf, th uh, thank you again for the two seventy nine spot. Appreciate it. Said, hey, Alan, do you save Ashley or Caden in that? Um, who who on earth would save Caden? Like like Ashley, she's a horrible space racist, but she has a personality. Caden is just a cardboard cutout you carry with you through three games. Like nuke him see you caden like what didn't even didn't even hesitate like it popped up and i always use a guide didn't even look at my guide to see what the see what the choices were i'm like oh caden or ashley see ya bye bro gone <laughs> gone and i'd do it again and did do it again tremendous but it should be known anyone who likes the book of justice of kings richard swan is a barbarian who shoots rex in the face who shoots Rex? And he's and so he tortures me by sending me screenshots of his playthrough of Rex being dead. Like, and he's like, "Yes, I like, I love this part. Well, I do it again, like gladly." I'm like, "What is your problem?" And he's like, "I replaced all those nerds in the council with humans." I'm like, "You're a terrible man, Richard Swan." Oh, Mo Monica wants to have you read the OG Fall and Decline of the Roman Empire. I have not read uh, Edward Gibbon. Um, I was going to buy it. And you told me not to remember. Yeah. Don't. You were like, it's, it's not, it's not. There is no reason that anybody should have to read that. If you were a scholar, then you should absolutely study fall and decline of the Roman empire. It's the quint. It is the, it is the tome. There's, there's no other reason because the same information, like, yeah, you're going to miss out on some minute details. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Who cares? Like, it's not, doesn't matter. If it was, if, if it was important, someone else would have included it. Um, it's just not worth it. It's not worth like getting through the denseness of Gibbon. Like I've read some of the abridged version, um, but it's just like, it's too much. Like if, if I really need to like really delve into a topic, I'll find out where it is in that freaking in that, in that series there. 
but otherwise I try to, I don't know. I, I much prefer, and this is, this is going to be the problem when I make history videos. And it's also part of the problem that I haven't made them yet. Besides just the time people are going to like, people are going to freaking be mean in the comments because they're going to be like, well, and actually, and I'm going to be like, look, <laughs> I, prefer, I prefer the more narrative style because guess what? If I am, if I, my students are not going to care. I have to make my students care. So if I don't get them invested, it doesn't matter anything yeah. else that I'm saying. So like, I'm sorry I didn't include that thing. Or I'm sorry that, you know, this person did not act exactly like this in history. Who cares? This is one of his character traits. And like, it, it has to be a narrative. So I, pref I much prefer the more narrative um, the narrative driven history books, yeah. because I just have a hard time. Like I have a hard time focusing if it's really, really dry. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I think a lot of people do it has to be something I'm very interested in, uh, for me to stick through a lot of the dry portions of it. Like I could, I could watch some dry stuff about Mesopotamia. Like, I can oh, watch man. a lot of dry stuff. I watched an hour and a half documentary on the font Helvetica. All right, that's dry. It was interesting. It was that's about as dry as it gets. Oh uh, yeah, I like I I watched it as a photography joke. is a big subject though. A lot of people are obsessed with it. Yeah, like yeah. I watched it as a joke. I thought it was going to be ridiculous, and at the end, I was like, Helvetica is everywhere. Oh my gosh, I see Helvetica all the time now. I know that you're not being serious. <laughs> he said they did not. There were there were like two hundred thousand Persians. They did not stop them. They held them, and then they were betrayed by Ephialtes. And um, Xerxes, and this is a fun fact, Xerxes literally was so embarrassed by how many Persians had been killed by the 4,000 Greeks at Thermopylae. They buried him, right? He had them bury all but a thousand bodies because he was embarrassed by how many had died. Like, so he buries the thousand bodies and takes a picture and it's like, look, Instagram, no filter, hashtag no filter, only a thousand died. Like Xerxes, that is so lame. It's so like, cap. It, it is cap. It is so Xerxes was a twerp. So I hate dude. Xerxes. Me too. I hate that guy. I do too. Good, good. That's Every right. Every time he posts the video, I'm like, again? I know. Well, douche. Have we seen this? <laughs> douche. Persia's gonna change the publishing industry forever. Xerxes, Xerxes crowdfunded from Persia and everyone <laughs> gave him money because they have to, because they're his subjects. And so he's gonna change <sighs> publishing forever. So I guess we got uh we got great peril coming down the pipe for both of us and the God is not willing. So are we going to do the God is not willing in April then? Like the, the discussion, I mean. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. March and April are crazy for me. I think I have literally something every single weekend for the next two months. I had a friend. He wants to play a tabletop game. I bought the A Song of Ice and Fire tabletop. It's like Warhammer. I, yeah, I've never seen this. Like you can play different households and all this stuff. And I've never played a game like this. And my friend wants to play from jujitsu and, uh, He's like, oh, you want to do it this week? I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, let me see. And uh, I can't do it next weekend. Oh, let me see. Ah, oh, nope, I have something. And I'm like, I literally don't have a free weekend until May. And then I have the super secret project next week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I know about your super secret project. Yeah, it'll be sweet. I can't wait. <laughs> <It's good. coughs> oh, my gosh. I'm dying. All right, man. I think it's time to go to the lands in between. Um, I agree. I agree. I yeah. agree. And this will give this will uh, we'll, we'll stop a little early this time. I mean, I don't I, I already have first, second, and third. So I, I'm I was going to say, I'll be honest. I uh, I last time I looked at the clock, it was uh, turning 930 <laughs> and it's 11 now. Oh, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Jimmy, like this is the time passes so freaking fast on these bloody things. Like specifically fast. always, but specifically with you, it's the fastest. Um <laughs> Man, we talk about like I don't know. It's it's easy. It's easy. We talk about whatever, and and the chat is super helpful about bringing crap up that we can just like Robert Pattinson's back. Yeah, the striations, bro. Someone's someone's gonna send you that meme, Jimmy, and I'm gonna. If not, I'll delete my channel. Someone better send me that. <laughs> oh no! And next episode, dude, we can we can finally set up our story graphs. <laughs> That should be the running thing. Like, hey, guys, next time on Chatting with Nuts, we're going to set up story games. It's a thing. It it's is. definitely a thing. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much for having me. And thanks, guys, for watching. This is fun stuff.
Yeah, I mean that's uh the maintain almost a hundred concurrent viewers an entire time is that's insane. Madness. That's mad. Who wants to watch this nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I appreciate everyone that does show up. Uh yeah, chat, you guys are awesome. Try to with notes. Yeah, you guys rule. Um now I, I I want everyone to think about what they want from a read along though. I don't feel like we ever came to the the secret sauce and the recipe. Um, so everyone think about that. That's your homework. And the next chatting with nuts, I'll ask the next guest about it as well. So that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, Jimmy. The next guest for chatting with nuts, which is, I believe March 25th will be Sarah reads. Uh, Sarah will be coming back oh, on and uh, we have a pretty cool announcement. Uh, are, you sure I, I'm not, are you sure I'm not also on that episode? Since I mean, I, we can bring in if anything y'all do, I can have on now. <laughs> we will. Uh, we'll What's be talking. Announcement? Well, I can't tell you. Oh, wait, I know. You what know is. what it is. I okay. I was like, I what? think people are going. <laughs> yeah. You'll want to be here to hear the announcement because I think it is something. It's something that Sarah has uh, spearheaded and it one, it's an amazing thing to do. Um, very thoughtful, but also I think people are going to be really excited. About I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the story about uh, the story about that special project one day and about how, like, I literally ended up having an anxiety attack. Like I was like, I had an anxiety attack. I'm like, Sarah, I can't, I can't even talk about this right now. Like I, I, like I literally am so filled with anxiety. I can't even, I can't even process. I can't process it. Like everything's anxiety. So it, well, I, I had to get back to her like that night. I mean, we, we are, uh, we're putting together something that's going to be a lot of effort, but I think it's going to really, um, it's, it's going to be cool. I think a lot of fans are going to be excited about it. And a lot of viewers are going to get a lot out of it and it's going to help. It's going to be something people. illegal. Uh, yeah, don't don't I, I don't know what that is. Um, oh, it's a buffalo herd. Interesting. Geo Shepherd. Oh my god, that's so on brand. How interesting. There is a buffalo herd moving. Sweet. That's <laughs> All righty, guys. Until next time. Uh, be good. Be safe. Oh, uh, and you know what, Alan? Also, I, I should thank you. Thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks. It. And remember to always keep turning the page. Keep turning the page. <laughs> Hit like. And subscribe.